Good morning. This is KBC Channel One, and you're watching Good Morning Kenya right here. And I am Regina Manyara, being the 2nd of August 2022, exactly six days uh, to the August polls. Are you ready to vote? Do you know who you're going to be voting for? Well, in as far as the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is that they're ready to hold a credible election uh, in the next six days, so to speak. So we had a great uh, day down at the Bomas where we had a team that is going to be camping there that is termed as the National Telling Center and we're going to be bringing you blow-by-blow blow occurrences down at the Bomas. Now, other than that, it is Baba. That is what President Huru Kenyatta had to say during a campaign by Azimio in Kisumu. While at the same time, Deputy President is warning the police over circulation of some leaflets. All this will be coming up in not too long as we also interrogate that directive by the Ministry of Education in regard to to closure of schools beginning today to pave way for the preparations for the elections. Remember, this is anchored by law that polling stations or other centers of education, that is schools that are um, to be used as polling stations, should have even displayed the list of their voters seven days you know, to the election. That and so much more will be coming up in not too long. We also invite you to our website, that is www at kbc.co.ke. But first things first, let's look at the, that, that particular directive in regard to closure of schools. Now, the government has ordered the immediate closure of all schools effective today. In a statement, Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha said the schools will remain closed until August 10th to allow for preparations and conducting of the August 9th general elections. The latest communication by the ministry supersedes any earlier communication. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha through a press release ordered that all schools should release learners for an early midterm break for a period of 10 days and resume on Thursday, 11th August 2022. The press briefing read in part in the quote, schools and parents are advised to ensure that learners from all basic education institutions proceed on their final half term effective Tuesday, August 2nd and resume Thursday, August 11th, 2022. End of quote. The CS said the government's decision on the immediate closure of all basic learning institutions with effect from Tuesday, 2nd August 2022 until Wednesday, 10th August 2022 was to pave way for the general election. Magoha had earlier on indicated that the institutions will close from this Saturday but explained that the decision to have them close from Tuesday, August 2nd was informed by further consultations. Now that is what was happening and following that directive, the IEBC also went further to complement what the education ministry did in, in that particular directive that despite schools just resuming the other day or rather some weeks past, well, this is anchored by law. Why? The electoral commission from today will be displaying respective voter registers at the polling stations. And according to the IEBC, it plans to print up to uh, the printed registers in all the 46 thousand uh, two hundred and twenty nine polling stations and that is an exercise that is required to take place a week to the elections anchored by law we'll continue examining this particular directive as we go have schools closed is was it i'm sure it's bound to be very um inconveniencing uh for some parents given that you know some children do not uh, uh undertake their studies within their hometowns and this is going to incur some travel and last minute travel arrangements. We'll be keeping tabs on that. Now President Uhuru Kenyatta has taken issue with a section of leaders that he says have termed his commissioning of projects as being tantamount to campaigning for the Azimio La Moja One Kenya presidential candidate Raila Odinga. Speaking while commissioning the Kariminu Dam in Kiambu County, the head of state dismissed his critics saying he will carry on with his duties until his term comes to an end. <laughs> Thank you.
President Uhuru Kenyatta on Monday commissioned the Kariminu Dam in Kiambu County. It is here that he faulted politicians for poking holes in some of his development projects. Lakini mimi naamini vile tulivundishwa na wazee wetu mtu anafanya kazi mpaka dakika ya mwi ama inaendaje unafanya kazi mpaka dakika ya mwisho sio hakuna mambo ya kusema ati hakuna kazi sasa tumetimiza na sasa kwa sababu hakuna kazi mpya tunaweza kuanza si tuanze kufungua zile tumemaliza tume the head of state said he has a duty to ensure Kenyans appreciate the work of his administration According to the president, the Kariminu Dam will go a long way in boosting agriculture in the region and solve the water scarcity menace. Dam ambaya sasa itakuwa na zaidi ya ita service zaidi ya watu milioni moja. One million people wataweza wapate maji kwa sababu ya dam hii. He said the project will benefit residents living in parts of Nairobi and Kiambu counties. Na kwa sababu project imekuwa successful tunataka tuipanue. Na itapanuka kidogo tuweze kupatia mpaka watu ya fika pia waweze wapate maji kutoka sehemu hii. Si ndio? Na hiyo ni mambo ya kurahisisha maisha ya wananchi. Now from uh, Kiambu there to Kisumu County where President Uhuru Kenyatta has reiterated the importance of uh, the March 2018 handshake between himself and ODM leader Raila Odinga saying it allowed him ample time to deliver to Kenyans. The president who is in Kisumu to commission various projects implored on the locals to not turn out in large numbers on the 9th of August and vote for the Odinga Karua ticket. Weekly for Catch reports. The president who spoke during the official commissioning of the refurbished Kisumu railway station was quick to drum up support for Raila Odinga, saying the Odinga at Karua ticket is the best team to lead the country. Sasa mimi sijui kama barabara yenu ni ile ya matusi na chuki ama ni ile ya maendeleo ama ni ile ya maendeleo Bas kama ni ile ya maendeleo na haki ni gari moja peke yake inatupeleka upande huo The president who is in Kisumu to commission various projects among them the newly constructed shipyard and the flotation of the MV Uhuru 2 ship warned the locals that Odinga risked losing the presidential seat if they failed to vote to the last man Nyinyi nyinyi mnajitokeza kwa nguvu kusema ndio lakini sasa njia njia ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba hiyo gari imeingia state house sio tu na mdomo njia kwa sababu nasikia nyinyi mnakubali kwa mdomo siku ikifika mtu anasema wacha niende nikatafute samaki mwingine anasema wacha kwanza niangalie kama bibi yako sawa Mwingine anasema wacha niingie hii bar nipige chupa mbili ni public holiday nitaenda huko baadaye Eh Hiyo ndio shida jameni Lakini kama mnaamini yale mnasema tarehe tisa Hii Kisumu town Hakuna mtu wa kuongea na mwenzake bila kuonesha kidole na kuonesha rangi The head of state revisited the March 2018 handshake between himself and the Azmi of Lagbera, urging the locals to choose peace over political rhetoric. Kwa sababu hata kama nimekuja kuaga na kuja kuaga nikiwaambia ya kwamba hii tumeweza kufanya pamoja nanyi. Tumeweza kufanya kwa sababu ya ile amani ambayo tumekuwa naye katika taifa letu la Kenya. Na hiyo amani ndio tunataka iendelee katika nchi yetu ya Kenya 
Now, still on politics, Azimio Lomoja presidential candidate Rala Odinga was on Monday back to Mount Kenya region in a final lap search for votes. Raila, who spoke in a series of campaigns, called for the support of the Raila Karua ticket, saying if elected, his administration can be trusted to bring meaningful development in the country. The duo once again retaliated that they would deal firmly with corruption. <laughs> Seven days to the 9th of August, Paul and the Azimiola Umoja Brigade are leaving nothing to chance as they seek to consolidate their support ahead of the 9th of August elections. The alliance would hold long-day campaigns in the Mount Kenya region, starting in Kirinyaga County, where they reiterated that they have the solution to what is ailing the country and call upon the residents to support them. <laughs> Na 202. Ile ngine leto huru, hii ya pili iliza katiba mpia. Hii ya tatu ni sasa ya ukombozi ya uchumi ya wa Kenya. During their campaigns in Kirinyaga, the duo also launched Rauka Firimbi movement that will be mandated to monitor the general election across the country before and during the voting period. Wa Kenya onmesema punda ya mechoka. Punda mfanya nini? Mechoka na mziko sivyo? Waswahili malisema tikibebacho kikimuja na fuko mchukuzi. Sio? Mwakanya manataka mziko ipunguzwe. Ama sivyo? Ama sivyo? Amunja choka, amunja choka. Mechoka, amunja choka. Wakabu mechoka nione mkono hapa. Ndiyo sababu tunasema... Hii kura unajiokoa uchumi wa nchi na uchumi wako wewe mwenyewe. Unajiokoa upate huduma nzuri ya matibabu unajiokoa upate masomo kwa watoto wako the azimio caravan would later head to kiambu county here they reiterated their commitment in fighting matters corruption if given the mandate to lead the country after the august poll during the event the alliance also emphasized on the issue of zoning claiming that was the only way to ensure the coalition has bagged a majority of representation in both levels of government Now, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission says all is set for the August 9th general elections. IBC Vice Chairperson Juliana Cherera says that the last batch of presidential ballot papers will arrive in the country tomorrow, even as she insisted that no extra ballot papers will be printed. With barely eight days to the August 9th general elections, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is out to assure Kenyans that all systems are in place to ensure a smooth process. Seven days to the date of the polls, we affix the voters' register outside the polling station, so this exercise will begin tomorrow. And by end of business tomorrow, we'll have all the polling station with the voter register outside. IEBC Vice Chairperson Juliana Cherera says that distribution of strategic material to the counties has begun with the last batch of presidential ballot papers expected in the country on Wednesday this week. We are printing uh, the ballot, post, ballot papers uh, in the number that is equal to the voters in the register. We are not printing anything more or anything less. Cherera, however, dismissed a clip doing rounds on social media, purporting to be that of Sunna East Member of Parliament, Junet Mohammed, in communication with an alleged IEBC official. There is nothing that I can say which is factual about it. So we wait until uh, if there is anything factual about it, then it will be said. To ensure equality, IEBC has launched an application where voter education material 
has been interpreted for those with hearing impairment and braille for the blind for easy consumption. Mefanya application ya ito assist all ambao tume train interpreters wote wa hinchi ambao wa sign language ambao watakuwa kwenye hiyo application na mtu yote ambao atahitaji uh, huduma kama hiyo akiingia kwenye hiyo application atategua ata mwenyewe ataka nani katika wale interpreters na ataweza kufanyiwa interpretation ya voter education materials to further build public confidence IEBC chairman wa Fula Chebukati says he plans to announce the presidential results during the day Well, on IBC is expected to be holding another briefing in the course of today, actually at 2 p.m., and will be there keeping tabs on what is happening in the final run towards the August 9th polls. And talking about elections, the upcoming general election is undoubtedly one of the most competitive political contests in Kenyan democracy. And while four candidates seek for the new title of Mr. President, Azimio Lomoja Raila Odinga and his Kenya Kwanzaa opponent William Ruto have emerged as front runners. As the day draws near, a spot check by KBC Channel 1 Nairobi found an electorate yearning for political sobriety and tolerance ahead of the elections. There is so much uncertainty regarding the grade 6 uh, students, whether they will be... <coughs> where they will be hosted, is it in high schools or in primary schools? So I think that should be a priority. Even uh, when they come in, immediately they come in into office, they, before they're even sworn in, they should have that in mind. The leaders to come to us, now I work on the projects that they've set, and they make sure that we don't struggle. Saizini Metoka government office, and what I've seen I've not liked, like, it should not happen like that. The leadership should be cautious of, conscious of things like that. So we want change. When I'm in uncertainties, when I come in in the camp, when I ask you in the world in the next four years, can I put a job? I'm under caution. No, no. In terms of sports, me, me come in football. I'm Kali. No, I'm not. Since you go your line, you know, I'm in hopes. No, I'm like a job to streamline those sectors. No, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. Sindio at least tuchagua watu wenye tunajua watatusaidia hapo mbeleni. Kwa na haja kuteremka nyumbani, wengi wanateremka na ukiangalia sio kura wanaenda kupiga. Jua wanaohofia kwamba kuweza kuwa na machafuko. Na hiyo ku travel ndio inachangia hiyo machafuko hata kama haingekuwa, alafu inakuja inaku inakuwa but wakistick mahali penye wako na tukae like brothers. I'll be voting from Kajado County. Uh hii uchaguzi what I'm expecting as a young person is leaders who are able to look at us as our people because we've suffered for a long time and it's time for a change. We are also voting for change. So the leaders we shall bring in. All we are asking is for peace. For those who lose, lose with integrity. For those who win, win with grace. Uh guzu uchaguzi nataka amani ikue. Eh watu wakae kwa amani baada ya uchaguzi na tunaombea mwenye atachaguliwa kama rais mbunge atengeneze inji ikuwe na na mafanikio mema Now on the campaign trail, Deputy President William Ruto is calling for investigations into an alleged intimidation of voters in some parts of the country. Ruto says no one should be coerced into voting for a particular candidate. The United Democratic Alliance presidential candidate has alleged that local administrators were being used to influence voting patterns in the grassroots. Achola Simon with the details. Ah, what The alleged intimidation of voters in certain parts of the country to vote for particular candidates has drawn the attention of presidential contenders with Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance flag bearer William Ruto seeming to concur with his opponent in Azimio, Raile Odinga, in castigating it. <laughs>
hiyo ni ndoto ya mchana tumewaona na mbali na hamuwezi kufaulu kwa sababu Kenya hii tumeamua itakuwa ni Kenya haiwezi tena kuwa na fujo kwa sababu ya mambo ya siasa haiwezi tena kumwaga damu kwa sababu ya siasa the right to vote is enshrined in our constitution I know Kenyan should feel threatened that if he votes this way or that way, he's going to be evicted from where he lives. That will not happen. Ruto father said every Kenyan is free to sell the agenda to every part of the country without prejudice. We have said and we have made a solemn commitment as the people from Rift Valley that we will live together in harmony. We will respect everybody's opinion and everybody is going to vote the way they want in this rifted valley. Kenyans must remain peaceful. Na sisi kama kaunti ya zingisha tuwezi letea wanyo konyoko. Nyeri ni gama na mbaga taretiza sa sita. You are living in stone age. Wakenya wameyakua ya kwamba wataishi kwa moja. Hakuna siku moja kutapigana kwa sababu ya uchaguzi. The Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade said they welcome the declaration by President that he will hand over power to the person Kenyans will elect in the upcoming poll. They maintain that the outfit is best placed to steer the country towards the right economic direction. <laughs> They maintain that the outfit is best placed to steer the country towards the right economic direction. Still on matters politics, a Mombasa gubernatorial candidate Hassan Omar has urged the United Democratic Alliance supporters to peacefully make their mark in the upcoming general election. Flanked by a host of party members and supporters, Omar said UDA is best placed to address the needs of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Omar Hassan Sarai says the United Democratic Alliance will focus on improving the life standards of Kenyans if elected into power. Omar's campaign has been boosted by the support of former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko. Wale wanatulungani, wanaunga mkono sisi. Wende mutupigie kura. Sisi ya tutaki mupigie, mupigie mtu. Sisi tutaka mweke utulivu na usalama. Sisi tutaka kuongoza hii inchi. Tutaka kuongoza wa Kenya ambao wako katika hali nzuri ya kiusalama. Mbana nao, na tunahomba IBC wa sitishu, tunayomba idara ya polisi wa wakwatoe usalama kwa usawa. Team Hustler ikishinda, tuko tayari kufanya na RC, lakini wache kuhuzia candidates wetu. Lakini tutuwa kisiasa ambayo itatugawanya sisi kama watu wa Mombasa na wa Kenya kwa jumla. Tumeishi vizuri wa Arabu, wa Islamu, wa Kristo, wa Jaluo, wa Kisi, wa Kamba, kabila zote. Kwa hivyo naomba tuendele kuishi hivyo hapa Mombasa. Kila mmoja wetu hapa. Hakuna masole ya kusema hawa ni wabara, hawa ni nani. Wote ni wa Kenya, wote watausisho katika ugavi wa rasilimali na ujenzi wa and Mendeleo Yawanawake organization has called on political tolerance and decorum among leaders. The organization chair Lady Rahab Muyu urged leaders allied to Kenya Kwanza to respect the office of the president and shun divisive politics. His Excellency the President Uhuru Muigai Kinyata is not a candidate in these elections. He is the outgoing president. So number one is to call on our leaders to be cautious on the, on the utterances they make during their political campaigns. Sisi kama maendeleo na tumiongea hapa miaka iyo yote. Tunaomba to remain respectful by all means. We do not want to hear some of the things we have heard in the last few days. And Quinda, member of county assembly, has faulted the Independent Electron Boundaries Commission for not clearing him even after meeting all the requirements. For the last 300 days, I've been up and down in courts, in tribunals, but finally the whole DM forwarded my name. But the ABC, through the memo dated on, uh, on 25th, to the returning officer, Madam Janet Dan, 
she has not cleared me up to now. She has been sitting on that memo. We don't know how what powerful how powerful she is. The chairman of the IBC, why is she defying the chairman of the commission? Now on to matters business where underwriting losses in the general insurance business narrowed to five, 510 million shillings during the first three months of this year down from a loss of 1.74 billion shillings reported during the first three months of 2021. The latest data from the Insurance Regulatory Authority indicates that the motor and private commercial and medical classes of insurance business reported losses of about 1.67 billion shillings during the period under review. The latest data from Insurance Regulatory Authority indicates that motor, private and medical classes of general insurance business incurred the highest losses of amounting to 1.04 billion shillings and 628.58 million shillings respectively. This saw the underwriting losses in the general insurance business narrowed to 510 million shillings during the first three months of this year, which is more than three times lower than the loss of 1.74 billion shillings reported during a similar period last year. However, the losses were offset by the personal accident class of business that posted a profit of 712.27 million shillings. The insurance industry gross written premiums rose 11% to 888.43 billion shillings, while premiums under general insurance amounted to 53.92 billion shillings. Of this, medical and motor insurance class contributed 35.9% and 27.5% respectively, while aviation, theft and miscellaneous classes premiums decreased by 16.1%, 11% and 10.6% respectively. During the period, claims in card rose 10% to 18.43 billion shillings. The highest claims were for medical services at 42%, followed by motor private at 25.5% and motor commercial at 24%. The claims paid rose 13.3% to 16.8 billion shillings. The reinsurer's business volume increased by 32.2% to 10.57 billion shillings, leading to an underwriting profit of 517.18 million shillings, compared to a loss of 990.23 million shillings during a similar period a year ago. Still keeping up with matters business is that Kenyan professional bodies have been challenged to tap into the emerging regional opportunities after the admission of the Democratic Republic of Congo into the East African Community Trading Bloc. The Institute of Certified Secretaries ICS Chairperson Diana Tanui says there are now new opportunities availed by the DRC and other EAC member states that professional bodies could tap in to for strategic growth. The Institute of Certified Secretaries plays the strategic role of enhancing social economic transformation by supporting best practices and good corporate governance, especially on boards of companies. The Institute of Certified Secretaries is keen on promoting good corporate governance practices to stimulate competition, innovation and sustainability of institutions. Speaking during ICS 27th annual dinner and award ceremony in Nairobi, Chairperson Diana Tanui challenged professional bodies to take advantage of the opportunities within the East African community to offer, among others, training. We, as an institute, have continued to promote good governance through strategic collaborations. We have entered into many memoranda of association with specific stakeholders specifically on areas of research uh, for purposes of uh, expanding the training opportunities for members. Certified secretaries contribute significantly to the overall economic development and stability and growth of a nation. 
Speaker said there are emerging opportunities availed by the Democratic Republic of Congo joining the EAC as well as liberalization of Ethiopian economy. As potential investors rely on the business information generated by public certified secretaries to make decisions on whether or not to invest in a particular venture. As an institute, we also continue to endeavor to ensure we help members uh, to build capacity by bringing most relevant topics and most relevant areas of concern so that then we remain relevant in the market and that we give value to the employers that we serve and the clients that we serve. Locally, the Institute of Certified Secretaries is working closely with public agencies, private sector and county governments to share expertise in devolved units through conventions and meeting in efforts to enhance good governance. Now to matter sports where the Kenya Police Football Club has kicked off preparations ahead of the new 2022-2023 Premier League season. This will be the Police F FC's second consecutive season in top flight football. The team will be boosted by shifting their home matches to the newly built Police Sacco Stadium at the CID Training Center uh, in South Sea. The newly built police Sako Stadium will relieve costs for hiring, training and playing venues and also aid in developing the team's fan base. The team's head coach Sami Omolo reaffirms that his players are in good shape for the season. That stadium will, will be used by the athletes, will be used with all the discipline, the volleyball, the rugby. You, can, you could see we have done everything there to make sure that it takes care of our members. You, you can see we, our members, we have members who are uh, uh, international champions in athletics. We have the uh, football, we have the rugby, who are also international, the volleyball team. So we have just taken care of all our members that will be using that um, stadium. And at the same time, that stadium will help also the community around, those communities living around the South Sea. They can exercise to, be, to have a healthy uh, nation. The stadium will also be handed over to the team's management later this week and will be a multi-sporting venue. The stadium will host all national police service sporting activities, among them football and athletics. The club has already made significant signings in preparation for the new season and is targeting to win the Premier League title. Well, that efficient, efficiently puts a cap to matters in the headlines this morning. Remember, further details are available on our website. We take a quick breather, but when we return, we're going to be looking, comparing the statistics in 2017 in as far as the last general election is concerned and 2022. So do keep it right here. Commonwealth Games will be hosted in Birmingham, United Kingdom from the 28th of July through the 8th of August 2022. Team Kenya is set to make its 17th appearance at the Games. Kenya will contest for medals in several disciplines among them athletics, boxing, hockey, rugby, weightlifting, wheelchair basketball and para sports among others. Watch the Games live on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. No, wait, Dad. Are you going to leave me alone? You said that you were going to stay here. Don't do this to me, Nadia, please. this is an emergency. It's about my son. What happened to me is also an emergency. And how did you find out about it? I never stopped looking for you, Monica. Have you been watching the lives of everyone here all this time? Yes. 
I feel degraded because of it. What I feel right now is anger. I'm angry and I feel stupid for not realizing early enough that Lionel had been going to bed with that woman for more than four years, Mom. This isn't about what you want. It's about who you love. Well, good morning once again if you're tuning in this is in the headlines right here on good morning kenya with just six days to the august polls what you're seeing on your screen are the four candidates that have been cleared to run for the top office in the ne next uh, six days or so on my far left we have Raila dinger and whose running mate is martha karua we have william ruto regarding ashagwa george wajakoe uh, running mate there Ju justina wamai and david more whose deputy uh, running mate there is Ruth Moshero Mutua. Over the last few weeks, we've been uh, going through their manifestos, what they intend to do for Kenyans if they are sent to power in the next uh, six days. And what has come out from what analysts have said is that these manifestos have clearly been uh, entrenched in matters of economic recovery. Remember, as a country where we are, we are still reeling from the co post-COVID uh, situation there. And the government, the current government that is in power has been working on economic re uh, recovery but it, based on building back better. And we have seen this totally come out in the four manifestos respectively. We're going to be talking about manifestos in the course of, of the next broadcast, but for now, those are the four. Rala Dinga, William Ruto, George Wajakoya, and David More eyeing the top seat come August 9th, which is just about six days away. Now, what is the difference between 2022 and 2017? Five years apart, and definitely there have been changes, especially in regard to the number of Kenyans who are expected to cast their ball ballot on August 9th. Let's just first look at what happened and the numbers that we got in 2017. There you go. So in 2017, which is the latest election before the one that we are walking to, which is just six days ago away, this is what we had. We had 19 million 605 895 kenyans registered to vote actually and the valid votes that were managed during this time five years ago was just 15 million 177,409 and the results are as is top there is a duo the dynamic duo of uh, deputy president william ruto and uhuru kenyatta there and uh, Jubilee there, garnering 54.17% of the total votes cast at 8,221,482. And coming in second and close is Raila Odinga under Nasser, uh, garnering 44.94% of the total votes cast, and the number being 6,820,598 there. Last but not least, the fourth uh, in this particular race was none other than Joseph Ndega as an independent can candidate who managed only to garner 38,018 votes. And that was zero, an equivalent of 0.25% of the full or rather the uh, votes cast during that particular election. If you look closely at the map, and we've been talking about strongholds and such, even in the campaign trail right now, We've been also having polls that have indicated who is likely to vote where by demographic as well as geographical placement. This is how the vote turnout was. We see the north was all red, central all the way to the coastal region. Uh, uh, lower parts uh, were red there, indicating that Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto drew their support from northern parts of Kenya, central as well as Rift Valley, while his main rival then, Raila Odinga, uh, managed Trukana as well as Western, coming all the way to Eastern. We can't see quite who voted for Joseph Ndega, but I'd want us to focus on the top two because they 
heavily feature on what is going to be happening in 2022. Why? It's because now Uhuru Kenyatta, who is a current president, has actually drawn all his weight behind Raila Odinga and uh, Azimio, one Kenya alliance. And even from yesterday's pronouncements, he said, well, if for peace and prosperity, then Kenyans should vote uh, for Raila Odinga there. And going further to say, and going, looking back at tw March 2018, when the infamous handshake came into power. Just to remind you, we have four candidates set for the 2022 elections, presidential elections, and that is Raila Odinga of the Azimio camp, and Kenya Kwanzaa there, his main rival there being William Ruto, who is the current deputy president. And we've been looking at the dynamics in as far as matters of politics are concerned. Away from politics, with just six days to go, is IEBC ready to conduct a free and fair election? Going by what they had to say at the BOMAS, which is going to be accounting as a national telling center, IEBC has an enormous task ahead. Why? From the numbers that we saw in 2017, looking at 19 million plus who had registered to vote and only 15 million actually took to the plus, took to the ballot in 2017, there's been an increase of at least 13.08% in as far as registered voters are concerned, with the number coming to 22,120,458 Kenyans who have registered to participate in the polls uh, that are just but six days away. This 13% increase has also led to the increase of the polling stations, with now IABC having 46,233 polling stations that should be manned not just by IABC officials, but also police. And in a quick update is that also IABC is going to be deploying officers and police to Migingo Island. Remember, this is an island that is secure, uh, you know, domiciled within Lake Victoria. And there's been a push and pull between Kenya and Uganda when it comes to matters of security. But things are changing in as far as the August polls are concerned, with 49 Kenyans expected to cast their ballot in the Said Island, Migingo Island there. Now, also what you're going to notice in the upcoming elections is that anchored by law is that these queues in these 46,223 polling stations Maximum of Kenyans or persons queued voters should be maintained at 700. 700 voters are expected to be lined up maximum per every queue. And we, will, we are going to be having 16,100 candidates who are in various elective seats across the country. And IBC is also going to be taking at least, uh, taking the, the, the ballots to at least 12 foreign countries to enable the over 10,000 10, uh, Kenyans who have registered to participate in the current elections from the diaspora to take part in this particular election. They will not be voting for MCAs or even uh, women rep or senator or governor. The diaspora vote is going to be primarily focused on the presidential candidates. And these are the four who have been cleared by the IEBC to take part in the presidential race that is just but six days away and also the prison vote is only going to be for the four i'm regina manyara i live in the capable hands of uh, the rest of my team you have been watching good morning kenya let's see you tomorrow as we speak more updates in regard to where we are as far as kenya decides right here on kbc channel one
So actually, before I hand over to my colleagues, that is Jane, Victor, and Doreen, I just want to sample one of the dailies that we have for you in studio. Uh, and the stories that have taken precedence in this particular daily being the 2nd of August. 2022. We start off with matters politics. Six days to the general election, Baba it is, Uhuru says as DP warns police on leaflets. Now this is matters of campaigns down to the wire under a week to go. President Kenyatta there speaking in, uh, in Kisumu and says the only path to peace and development is a vote for Azimio candidate, but Ruto reads a full play after hate messages circulate in the rift. That is what we have on the front page of this particular daily. Just to sample uh, persons who've been quoted, we start off with Raila Odinga, the Azimir presidential candidate. Why, uh, why are you, Ruto, directing your anger at President Uru Kenyatta by abusing him on a daily basis, yet he is not on the ballot? I challenge you to come and face me and Martha at the ballot next Tuesday. Kenyans will decide. Now, President Uru Kenyatta, also been quoted in this particular daily, we must ask for votes for Baba. Raila, don't fail to vote and start complaining. Vote and be done by midday. If you vote for selfish and corrupt people, they will not bring any development project. That is what President Uru Kenyatta has been quoted as what he said during the uh, campaigns that are underway in Kisumu County. On the other hand, William Ruto, a UDA presidential candidate, we are asking our supporters not to accept to be provoked by anybody because violence is not part of the equation in Kenya Kwanzaa. We respect democracy and that is why we have leaders from all regions of the country being with us it's down to the wire six days to the august polls that is what has been captured in the front page of this particular daily with just six days to go the campaign is indeed very heated now back to matters of national news away from matters of politics national as it may be we're talking about the high cost of fuel and why this is a bane to farmers kenya continued to pride itself as an agricultural driven economy but the latest turn of events in matters of inflation as well as the fuel cost is actually hampering food security in the country. We'll be giving details as we talk matters business there. Then also from today, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission is going to be taking a uh, printed a list of voters uh, to the polling stations that are spread across the country. We are talking, at, uh, at, uh, we are talking about 46,000 plus polling stations there. And uh, this is also comes from the announcement uh, by the Ministry of Education to, that gave a directive yesterday of school closure countrywide. This is to pave way for effective election preparation. Remember, a majority of public schools are going to be used as polling stations during this particular polls that are just but six days away. Back page, we're talking about sports. Why? Well... Uh, we're talking about England. When we took part in the World Cup last season, England kept on saying, you know, it is coming home. Well, indeed, the women delivered in as far as uh, the, uh, the contenders of uh, the Euro Cup 2022 are concerned and England's female team, all women team, did that, just that. And captured there is none other than the England manager there, Serena Wigama, who says, we have now won the Euros. We expect well, we will go up again, but first we will party. Further details are on our website. Over to you, Jane and Doreen, as well as Victor. What do we have on our various dailies? kitchen is Husna Latia's little haven where she enjoys baking and making snacks. We find her busy making orders for a party. She then briefs us on what led to the birth of Latia baking and snacks house. <laughs> Nimepoteza babangu nikiwa miaka 15 
ikabidi nini kazi kisabuni ili kuji, ili kusimama nami kumsaidia mamangu na ndugu zangu wadogo zangu katika shule shuka, katika kuwahimiza kusoma na vile vile pia kuwasaidia kulipa ada zao pia za shule Husna then walks us through the benefits she has continued to reap from her passion for baking and making of the Swahili snacks Biashara yangu imenisaidia kufanya sehemu zangu kulipa ada ya shule yangu na vile vile pia kujiendeleza na being a young girl with her potential, she has become a role model to most of her peers in Majengo Oriam Vita constituency who have on several occasions asked her to teach them the skill. Sasa kuna wengine ambao wameitisha wameitisha darasa ambao nafundisha kiki lakini nilikuwa nataka muda fulani niweze kujipanga ili kuanze kuanzisha darasa zangu za kupika keki. Her mother is her role model. Nimeanza kazi ya upishi wangu nikiwa mdogo. Nimepata ujuzi kutoka kwa mama yangu vile kwa sababu pia yeye pia ni mpishi. Nimeiga kwake kwa kila na kwa kila alichokuwa akipika mimi nilikuwa nikiangalia na nikipata ujuzi zaidi. Aiming for more clientele, Husna has launched a YouTube channel and other social media platforms to market and sell her products. Kando na kuka keki, bile bile ni 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 kama an influencer kwa Instagram yangu, bile bile ni mipa ni na fanya video zangu kwa YouTube, na watu ingi wana sisi sisi wana taka ku kuwa kama bile mimi, ni kula kuna vinya abomu wana wana inspire boy kama mimi. Her mother. Hadija Ali, who is always by her side, is proud of her daughter and urges parents to support their children in their chosen ventures. Ningependa kuambia ikiwa mtoto amemaliza kusoma na ikiwa pesa hauna pesa kumuendeleza kusoma. Siku hizi kuna ujuzi mwingi sana wa mikono. Asa hapa Mombasa naona kuna ujuzi sana ambao mtoto wasichana wengi ambao wanataka wanataka kufanya kuna salon na baking hizo kazi za mikono ndio ndio zinaweza kusaidia sana maana mtoto anaweza kusomesha mshoa mshoa kuisha asipate kazi abaki na certificate yake nyumbani lakini akifanya kazi ya mkono she calls on the youth to embrace skills especially those anchored in their line of interest. Tukiangalia kwa sasa hakuna hakuna kazi itakuwa bora zaidi kama rais akishinda kama ni Raila ama yoyote atakayeshinda atakijaribu kushinda. Apewe watu apewe vijana wapate kujiendeleza. Mimi nikiwa mmoja wapo niko tayari kuwasaidia vijana wenzangu kwa kufanya kazi za mkono. For young and industrious from Mombasa County, I am Anboro. The Ogiek of Mau are spread across six counties that include Nakuru, Narok, Wasin Gishu, Nandi, Kericho, and Baringo, and as such, we journeyed to Nakuru County. Traditionally practicing hunting and gathering, the Ogiek are considered among the marginalized communities, owing to, among others, their small numbers. As per the 2019 census report, the community comprises of 52,596 members. Often likened to the pygmies of the Congo, the Ogiek, whose name means caretaker of all plants and animals, believe the forest is essential to their way of life and ultimately their survival. Na wasee waliniambia 1970s walikuta watu walikuwa nakata hii miti. Na hiyo miti unaosa unaisaona hapa e, vile hiyo miti iliweza kukatwa na wazee walikimbia kwa nguvu sana kuhakikisha ni hii sauti inasikika kwa hii msitu ni gani. Kufika wanakuta ni hii miti yao inakatwa. Wazee wakazuia hii miti mpaka leo hii si unaona hata imepona. Hiyo miti imepona. Among the Ogiek's, honey was and has been the trademark and staple food. Hapa wazendi walikuwa nakaa, misinga yote ilikuwa inatengenezewa hapa, 
hapa ndiyo walikuwa wanachona msinga na kuweka na kusupply hapa kwa hivyo hapa ni sehemu muhimu sana kwa jamii Residing deep within the forest, the community has had less exposure to modern medicine and their knowledge of herbs has come in handy. Watu wanaona tu ni majani lakini ni madawa. Kwanza hii hii umeona hii. Inatibu tumbo. Hii ndio ku unatoa mizizi ya ndani. Unangoa, una unatapuna tu na kukumeza tu mate yake. Hiyo maji yake. The Ogiak believe the sun Tororet was a deity and often offered sacrifices when faced with calamities such as drought. The elderly women were charged with offering prayers of protection that were held at night. In this community, unlike their neighbors, the larger Kalenjin communities who offered blood sacrifices, the Ogiek used honey mixed with water for their religious ceremonies. The Ogiek used Mapwaita, a shrine for all cultural, spiritual and ritual matters, but only women who were pure of wrongdoings were allowed to pour milk referred to as chango, mixed with honey and water, onto the shrine alongside their male counterparts. Each clan is headed by an elder, Apuyon. Mse mmoja alikuwa na misinga karibu elvutatu katika misitu yake. Kwa sababu jamii ya okie, walikuwa wamegawa misitu, kila clan iko na misitu yao. Wa mama nae jukumu yao ilikuwa ni kutafuta ile kuni imekauka hiyo ndio alikuwa wakiota for the ogiek boys and girls of age underwent the count saa ile samani ilikuwa na tairi watu kwa mama naweka kichwa akaenda kuleta majani kwa mstoni na saa hiyo kijana amefereka watoto mstoni naenda kukatia hiyo majani ilikuwa tunashika in matters of dress, the Ogiek hunted the Hyrax for its hide in the red. Kwa mfano, hii nilidhiri kwa waze, hii, kwa babu, nae babu wakari, baba haka mridhi kwa babu. Na mimi sasa kama mtoto ni meridhi, na sata mimi ni tatransfer kwa watoto. Both men and women adorned in the same attire, with women accessorizing using beads, brown beads symbolize the earth, white piece black the african skin and green for the environment sasa hii ndio nguo ya jamii ya ogie ukiona hii umeona jamii ya ogie living by their edicts about conservation they used myths and taboos to discourage cutting down of certain tree species kamweu ni mahali watu wanaogopa and the ogie community believes that the forest requires them for its survival just as they require the forest for their survival but years of land injustices climate change rapid urbanization is threatening this particular birthright unajua kwa kwetu wazee wazee wa samani miti kama hii kubwa ikianguka wanaenda na wazee there were more other spiritual places of worship scattered within the forest but prohibited to women and young men kila kitu kama hata ni kuinua kama ni mzee mtu anapewa kiti kama sasa mfano kama mtu fulani anataka kupewa kama kiongozi anapelekwa hapo the community who won a land case in 2017 at the African court in Arusha, Tanzania, laying claim to the Mao complex, which the government is yet to acknowledge. Kama watu wanashinda kesi, itangenesewa kama vile ilivyo, na ikuatiriwe yonekana kesi yo imeisha. Due to constant evictions, the community is fading away with those still within the Mao complex not able to access basic amenities such as hospitals and schools. Most, most parents cannot afford to take their children to boarding school 
which are, which is expensive. So you find uh, that Ogiek children stay up to up to the age of 10 or 8 before joining nursery school or early education. The Ogiek caretaker of all plants and animals can only hope for inclusivity and in policy making to safeguard this tradition and culture. Regina Manyara reporting for My Culture. He has described himself as a man on a mission. I am a man on a mission. I have no space to retreat and I don't have the luxury to surrender. As a presidential runner in the 2022 elections, he has repeatedly referred to himself as a hustler. You are the hustler number one. <laughs> But who is this man? <laughs> President. William Bruto, through the eyes of the Monanchi. Kwa miaka kumi na moja, Minto FM imekuwa pamoja nanyi, ikiwa pa Berudani na kuwa ilimisha. Na sasa tunawalika mashabiki wetu tujumuike pamoja kwa tamasha la Minto Night. Tarehe sita mwezi wa Agosti tutakuwa na Minto Night huko Wins Park Resort Kisi. Wana mziki kama vile Kwasa Kwasa, Embara Mbamba na wengine watakuwa site kwa berudisha. Siku ya Jumapili tarehe saba Agosti Minto FM itaandaa maombi ya shukrani na kuombea uchaguzi wa mani katika uwanja wa Ethereum Primary School kuanzia saa tatu asubuhi. Waimbaji wa Nyimbo za dini wakiwemo Evangelist Eric Mwaniki, Molly Kemunto na wengineo watakuwemo Nyote Mwalikwa Minto FM Kenya Karuga Yomusi He has been widely described as the enigma in Kenyan politics For 50 years Kenyans have wandered in the wilderness his critics are as eloquent as his supporters are in their praise. When it was in the interest of the country that it was important for him to work with Kanu for the benefit of the country, he did that. As a seasoned politician, his tab at the presidency has been a case of so near yet so far. They now have an opportunity through these elections. But who is this man? Raila Odinga, through the eyes of the Kenyan youth. here too. The king won't do anything to you. What are you doing here? You gave up your future for a woman. You've disappointed me.
mwezi mtukufu wa muhaba ambao ndio mwezi ambao tuko ndani yake sasa hivi ni mwezi ambao unahusika sana na ibada ya funga ya tasu'a wa ashura una haki ya kuifunga siku kama hii saumu ya ashura siku ambayo kusoma ambayo kwa ni bora ukifunga Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na kusamia madhambi mengi a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim We need numbers. And I'm sure dad is not supposed to find out about this. No, 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 not in this life. How would you like coming to work here at Genji? Is Kathy in agreement with all of this? I'm not answerable to her. Why don't you want the same thing as your mother? How do I trust you? I'll help you the board members. How? I'll call them one by one. I'm mean, one to hire your kazi. Wewe wala kutabua. Eh. But I. Juu yazo mapataka hiyo kazi utanipatia 20 parasenti. Yo hi, usisemage mimi huwa sikujegi. Wewe usifanye nikuwe tena wewe. Mimi mpataka nikitaka kutoka ni sherehe kazi. Masibi hii. Alafu utaniacha mlango mimi nitafunga after meeting. Pitu ndio mkombo nipigie simu niombe msamaha. Forget I called. Shida gani hukukataza kwenda kwa Christine usikiagi. Ona bala, ona bala sasa. Kuna mtu anakuanga kusaidia yangu kwa hii family? Huyu kijana anatumia Gen Z baya sana. You know sometimes love can be blinding. Unaweza ongea na yeye? Mimi na Jen, you know I've always wanted a white wedding. Are you even sure you love him? What do you know about marriage na yako ta? Aiende vizuri. Oh, Jen, you really don't know me. Huyu msichana vile ni bad news. So that your family are vizuri ya mumu asahau. Najaribu kumuelewa kaka yake. Nene nilikufanya ukoleka na dada. Uliko unampenda? Bado ninampenda. Sijai wacha kupenda babako. Na unampendea nini? Usinisumbulie mtoto niko na mmoja mimi sina watoto wengine nje. Huyu ni mtu mzima sasa. Eh, hey, kwa hivyo hao oh, leo na kinyangani katichwa chochote ndio ufurahi, si ndio? village in Malava, Western Kenya, residents throng these homes they to mourn one of their own, the late Mzee Malaha Chinjeni of Venue Subkla. The body which was being preserved at the Kakamega Referral Hospital mortuary has been moved into the deceased's homestead. Dini Amsambwa is presiding over the interment. This is Dini Yetu, Nukuupiri Watu, Waruti, kwa mila yao na waendelee na tini ya Mwafrika ambayo itaruhusu ukipatishwa unapatishwa tumemsika kulingana na mila na desturi ya uko wao bali na hiyo tumemsika kufuatia desturi ya dini ya msamba Dini ambaye ilileta na Elijah Masinde Dini Msambwa is presiding over the interment Elders must chant songs and perform rituals to appease the gods. Before the body arrives in the homestead, a grass thatch hut is erected. This is the place where the body will be placed. Na vile hiyo nyumba ilikuwa inachengwa, inachengwa kwa ajili ya yale maana hiyo nyumba hapo mbeleni wazee ambao walikuwa wako walikuwa wanachenga hiyo nyumba kwa ajili ya maombi kulilia Mungu kumueleshea shida yao alafu hawa eh wanapata report kulingana na malaika wala ambaye Mungu ametuma a bed is then placed in the hut as the resting place of the deceased 
When the body arrives, it is placed in the hut and only elderly men are allowed to view the body. Women and young men are prohibited from going into the hut. An elderly man is assigned to guard the heart and watch over the body. The body is placed on its side in the heart. During the event, a bowl is slaughtered facing the heart. The meat is eaten by mourners. The cowhide is rolled and placed under the bed. Diniam Sambo sect leads mourners in prayers and a service is held in honor of the deceased. The body of the deceased lies in the heart for a day. On the day of the burial, dressed in religious attire, the Dini Amsambo faithful lead mourners in song and dance as well as the service. The body remains in the heart throughout the duration of the service. When it is time to take the body down the grave, the elderly man take the heart placed underneath the bed and wrap the body with it. Those buried naked are believed to be prominent persons and of high dignity and will go straight to heaven. They then proceed to the burial site. Prior to throwing dust into the grave, twigs and leaves are placed to prevent the body from being in contact with the soil. <laughs> Ngozi ambaye ya mepaki. Alafu wanaweka nyafi juu yake. Alafu wanaleta miti wanaweka. Ndiyo wanafunika na mchanga. Inazemekana huyo mze. Alikuwa mtu wa mali. Alikuwa ni shuja. Saza hiyo ngozi. Anaenda na mali. Yale ambaye. Alikuwa nayo. Pile wamefanya na muna hiyo. Three weeks after the burial, the elderly man will return to the homestead and plant a tree. Gengi sometime between 1889 and 1895 in Gatundu, Kiambu district. He later changed his name to Jomo Kenyatta. Thanks to his good command of English, he became the secretary of Kikuyu Central Association in 1924. In 1947, Kenyatta took over the presidency of Kenya African Union after James Kishoro stepped down in his favor. In October 1952, Kenyatta alongside five cow leaders builded Kagia, Fred Kubai, Paul Ngei, Achengo Neko and Kongo Karumba was detained in Kapengure 
and charged with involvement in the Mau Mau uprising. My leadership has not been to darkness and, 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 and death, but to light and prosperity. On 8 April 1953, Kenyatta and the rest of the Kapenguria Six were sentenced to seven years in prison. Kenyatta was elected in absentia as the president of Kenya African National Union, KANU. KANU won the January 1961 elections but declined to form a government until Kenyatta was released. Upon Kenyatta's release in August 1961, James Kishoro stepped down for him as the president of KANU. He also joined the LegCo as the member of Fort Hall Moranga constituency after Kario Kinjiri stepped down for him. In 1962, Kenyatta attended the second Lancaster House Conference in London to discuss constitutional amendments. What we have been struggling for is to redeem our country from the yoke of colonialism and imperialism and to be able to build a Kenya that Africans can be proud of. On 1st June 1963, Kenya attained internal self-government Madaraka and Kenyatta became the Prime Minister. On 12 December 1964, Kenya became a republic with Kenyatta assuming the first president. In 1964, Kadu and the African People's Party joined Kano through the efforts of Kenyatta. Kenyatta's motto was Uhuru Nakazi, independence and hard work, and his clarion call was against poverty, ignorance and diseases. In 1977, the aging Kenyatta suffered a mild heart attack and on 22nd August 1978, he died peacefully in his sleep in Mombasa. Mze Jomo Kenyatta remains where he interred at a mausoleum at Parliament Building, Nairobi. Jackie Wambiru, The Cabinet. In 1907, in Juno, Kiambu County, Mbiu Koinange was the eldest son of Koinange Wambiu and Wairimu, who had seven children. His father was a prominent chief during Kenya's colonial period. In 1927, Mbiu Koinange moved to the United States for studies, where he attended Hampton Institute in Virginia and graduated in 1931. Between 1931 and 1939, he attended several universities abroad to advance his education, including Ohio Wesleyan University in Delaware, Columbia University, University of Cambridge, and University of London. He returned to the country in 1939 as the first Kenyan to hold a postgraduate degree. Upon his return to Kenya, he served as the principal of the Kenya Teachers College in Gidunguri, Kiambu County. Bill moved to England in 1951, a year before a state of emergency was decreed in Kenya, where he stayed for 10 years and returned as the secretary of the Pan-African Freedom Movement for East, Central and South Africa. Between 1963 and 1979, he served as the member of parliament for Kiamba constituency. 
During his 16-year tenure as the Member of Parliament, Bill Koinange served in several roles, including Minister of State for Pan-African Affairs, Minister for Foreign Affairs, and Minister for Education. But it was while serving as the Minister of State in the office of the President between 1966 and 1979 that he carved his niche as Kenyatta's right-hand man. He enjoyed unparalleled access to Kenyatta as his bosom friend, in-law, and confidant. Koinange lost the Kiamba seat to Njenga Karume in 1979. Bill Koinange died in 1981 at the age of 74. located in Kabeta area of Kimbu County doubles up as the operations best for Epica Jewelry's online store. We find the businesses found Sharon Wenda and her production assistant Fiona Atieno here working on one of their orders. She then briefs us on what led to the birth of Epica Jewelry. As I was figuring out what I want to do with my life, I, have a, I had a friend who told me like there's this project called Kenya Youth Empowerment Project where like they're training young people on entrepreneurship, financial, this financial management. It was a one-year program, so I applied, I got in. So it was just mainly talking about business, employment, and then after the program, you get like an internship, like a three-month internship. So it was a three-month internship. I was being taught like bidding, so I was doing like the Maasai belts, just like a lot of Maasai stuff for three months. Then after the three months, after like the internship ended, I was the lady who taught me bidding. I was still doing some stuff for her. After getting the job, like being happy, I'm like, yes, I'm set. I didn't like it. So if I decide to just take this design journey, it's it's a bold move, but I can't do the two things at the same time. I have to choose. Winda then walks me through the process that brings about these works of art that range from earrings, neck pieces, bracelets, and full body jewelry. And so when you're making a beaded piece, it, because we, we make like really colorful stuff, right? So the color, the colors are very specific, intentional. So we put it in a plate, you have to segment it with like the different colors you're using. So beads are picked like one by one, one by one when you're doing like the whole pattern. With threads, we have to using pipe and then using like a bunch of different colors to just like roll the thread around the pipe. On this wall are the highlights of our entrepreneurial journey. different pieces that she has made and showcased in different stages. Yeah, that's why it's in the centre. <laughs> Vogue. The crowning. Vogue Italy. Sharon says every day is a learning opportunity in this venture, even as she wades through the business with the various challenges it comes with. If it's a new design, like you're making something really new, there, ha there are moments of frustrations because when, when you've done something on a sketch and then when you're making it, it doesn't come out as you thought, there's a bit of frustrations when you're making something completely new. When it's a small brand, you have to do a lot on your own. Like you have to do a lot. You are, like you're doing, you are splitting yourself in like five different directions. Aiming at client satisfaction is the ultimate goal for a peak of jewelry. business has since inception been her means of putting food on the table. And then we have here it's the Taosi masterpiece. So we showcased this in London Fashion Week last year. And since joining, her production assistant has benefited from the training and is also now financially stable. Within the last two years, I've been doing a lot of entrepreneurship programs just to basically improve my business skills because I'm still small and I'm growing. I've helped my family and because it's, it's been consistent. 
Wenda is optimistic the business will continue expanding. I'm hoping like we'll get to a place where people are actually buying stuff off the runway here. That would be like a great place to be so that even when you're doing fashion shows, you know you're doing it and the turnover will make sense. You definitely want to get into clothing, but clothing that's incorporated with bit work. So that's something we're looking to try and sort of grow into. For this entrepreneur, her bijouterie products are her daily motivation. The entrepreneurial journey that started in 2015 is now a means to make ends meet for the founder who hopes to set up a physical shop in the future as she continues to adorn people with an African touch, one ornament at a time. You're so far reporting for Young and... Matavia area, Kiembu County. This is the home of the Cheer Up Community Based Organization. The organization's operations manager welcomes us, and after brief introductions, we are briefed on the organization's history. Uh, so, Cheer Up started as a feeding program for orphans and vulnerable children. So, initially, guys would give donations, and then uh, kids would be supported in various ways. In 2004, it was registered as a self help group and it continued its operations. 2013, it was registered as a CBU with the Ministry of Gender. Cheer Up Enterprises kicked off in 2013 with drying of vegetables during the peak season and their retail during the dry season. The organization comprising youthful membership used to source excessive veggies from farmers before drying and milling them to sell later. Today, however, on the menu is freshly sourced bananas. Operations manager Tabitha Kahura walks me through the process that turns these fresh bananas to powder. When we came in, we cleaned everything, our working station, our equipment. Uh, from there, the personnel, the one who work in that area, they'll start cleaning them and uh, preparing them for the dryer. That involves cleaning, cutting the tips. Mm, yes, and also we weigh them. We have to weigh the initial weight of the bananas before we dry so that we can compare with the dried ones and know the ratio. The solar dryer usually takes two to three days depending on the weather, and once ready, it is time for milling. The banana, now in powder form, is then sieved to have a smooth product before it is then packed and ready for sale. We get a front row seat to this porridge made from the milled banana and this is sumptuous. Mm. This isn't, however, the only product that Cheer Up Enterprises has. To make we are to keep dry vitu, kama bananas, pumpkin, na carrot, ata na vegetables, kama skumawiki, managu na terere. To make we are to keep kausha. We are more on that side now, on the powders. Because yes, you can also turn skumawiki and spinach and everything into flour, but it does not have as many uses. The business in cars and operation costs of between 80 to 100,000 shillings a month. Sales range between 180 to 200,000 shillings, translating to monthly profits of up to 90,000 shillings. Thanks to the business, members are now able to reap the fruits of their labor and even employ other young people to get experience and make a few coins for themselves. <laughs> Kuchimudu kimaisha vizuri na ninaona na uh, meet in my bills na hiki na hiki kikudi na save kidogo ili atambi juu nataka atambi ni kunini kuweka kazi yangu tia na nunua chakula juu si lent na alipi amtoto school fees eh, na nimekina lot of experience na pia skills 
In 2017, the organization obtained a 250,000 shilling loan from the Youth Enterprise Development Fund that has assisted in the procurement of equipment for the business. The organization now hopes to secure another loan to expand the business and at the same time maintain their goal that has now shifted focus, targeting families affected by HIV and AIDS. We hope to open a shop where you can find our products anytime, any day. We hope to expand our production. One of our main challenges is that we sometimes cannot meet the demand for the products because of the capacity. Our dry is not so big. Uh, so we can only produce as much. Uh, we hope we can get our own land to set up larger, more efficient solar dryers uh, and transfer our entire operation to a permanent location. Na tunaona tukienda Bali tuwe na a big factory. Na ili tuadike watu wengi na tugepeda sana ili tuweze kusaidia our community. Every business comes with its own fair share of challenges, but with the correct mindset and resilience, the challenges are easier to overcome. Going forward, for the chair of CBO, one thing is for certain for them. The only way from here is up. Yusufar reporting for KBC Features from Matade Village, Lari Sub County, Kiambu County. promoting development of local content and ensuring responsible use of broadcasting platforms for national good to give you and your family choice with a variety of content to enjoy. The Communications Authority of Kenya. Opening your world. The 2022 Commonwealth Games will be hosted in Birmingham, United Kingdom from the 28th of July through the 8th of August 2022. Team Kenya is set to make its 17th appearance at the Games. Kenya will contest for medals in several disciplines among them athletics, boxing, hockey, rugby, weightlifting, wheelchair basketball and para sports among others. Watch the Games live on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel One, your true sports partner.
This plot located in Waitevi Ward, Kiemu County plays host to the Jimmy Products Company Limited. The organization's 30-year-old chief executive officer, Kimani Charles, now a fourth-year student, welcomes us to the premises where members of his staff are keeping the production line live. <laughs> This is not where the factory started. Kimani walks us down the memory lane to when the business idea struck his mind. The year 2018, January 2023, that's how I started the business. That's when I started the business. And because I couldn't have the capital, I happened to borrow the Kenya shilling 1600 from Mshwari. But because that way I could just lend the money. So after I got the, the loan, I was trying to figure out what can I produce. I can know I'm going to see waste. Actually, to a waste. You see these bills are zaunga. Za hiyo hiyo ya dani hiyo. Hiyo ndio nilikuwa nanunua kwa shop. Ena nazichukua na pimua na kilo. Then I come na tengeneza mifuko. But that, then I could not produce kitu safi because I didn't have the idea. So I can maximize that ka profit kidogo 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 until nikaona inaanza ku grow. This factory that now comprises four room spaces started operations in a single room. The CEO walks me through what happens once the khaki raw material that is locally sourced gets to the office. We have the raw material. We cut it according to the pieces that we need. The pieces are also the product that we need to produce. Then from there we take it to the production department. They fold it. They, after folding, they package it. They also brand. They also divide themselves. The business has 14 members of staff. The company focuses on six main products. These products are packaging bag, envelopes, gift bags, book covers, popcorn bag, and cake boxes. In this training room, we see those who have expressed interest in the business being inducted by the company's training officer. We've been here for the last two weeks, actually today to max the, exactly two weeks since we're here. And I can say the, prog uh, the progress has been amazing, me and my team. And uh, we've been able to train from the envelopes, the gift bags, to the covers, to the uh, many other things, like even the branding. Whenever you train someone, that's an employment you have, self-employment to that person. Well, the business has its own fair share of challenges. You need to make sure that everything is learning. You understand? And then you also need to make sure that uh, the stuff that you are, you are the the wana kutegemea, you make sure that they also have the comfortability. You can get the product there to hi-fi kuwa na maji, you know, contamination of the water. Yeah? Another thing is about the dust. Those are the two key things that you make sure that Despite the challenges, the fourth year student's resilience has seen him grown to a point of opening other branches for his siblings, something that he counts as a success story. I love it. I then have that burning desire to see that we are growing. In Naivasha we have a branch for my just for my 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 young my older brothers, my sisters, four of them. I also have I have also opened a branch for my brother in Kamuru. Joska because he is schooling there. Kimani, however, has opted to stay on the manual side of production, attributing his decision to what he terms high quality of the end product. From a 1600 shilling Mshwari loan to a now fully functional business and financial independence for the entrepreneur, Charles now hopes to own a bigger warehouse in the future and create employment for members of his community to financially empower them. He's so far reporting for young and industrious from Waitedi Ward and Juja Sub County, Kiambu County.
msikilizaji wa KBC Channel 1 wali popote ulipo ni furaha iliyoje ikiwa leo ni siku ya pili mwezi ni wa nane mwaka ni wa elfu mbili ishirini na mbili tumesalia na siku sita kabla kwa wa Kenya kuweza kufanya maamuzi yao debeni msikilizaji karibu sana kwenye kipindi zinga awamu ya tatu kupitia KBC Radio Taifa sauti ya mkenya na vile vile pia kipindi hiki kiko moja kwa moja kupitia runinga yako na ipenda ya kitaifa KBC Channel 1 kwenye kipindi Good Morning Kenya studio ni tutakuwa naye mchanganuzi wa masuala ya kisiasa bwana Barak Muluka mimi ni mtangazaji wako jina langu naitwa Rashid Momkondo na msikilizaji kio zimekatika dakika kumi baada ya saa mbili tunawakaribisha wote kumbukia kwamba leo hashtag ikiwa ni siku ya Jumanne hashtag zinazosambaa ama zinazotembea ni mbili ya hashtag zinga na hashtag good morning kenya nikisema hashtag good morning kenya ni kwamba ma, matangazo haya yanapeperushwa live kupitia KBC channel 1 kwa hiyo kwa yule ambaye yuko karibu na runinga yake basi fungulia sasa hivi ili uweze kusikiliza yale ambayo tumekuandalia asubuhi hii ya leo na kwa yule ambaye yuko kwenye redio yake basi kupitia Nairobi unatupata 92.9 kwa wale ambao wako Mombasa unatupata kupitia 100.8 na leo hii tunataka kuangazia hili swala zima la uchaguzi kama tulivyokuwa tumesema awali ni kwamba wa Kenya sisi tunajulikana sana kwa kupapatika tunapokaribia uchaguzi na Rashid Nam. mgeni wetu unajua kitu ambacho ameniambia asubuhi ya leo alikwambia ananiuliza swali mm -hmm. hii studio unajua haikuwa radio taifa hapo mm -hmm. awali mm -hmm. ilikuwa ni studio ilikuwa vipi vile mm -hmm. imagine yuko sawa kwa sababu radio taifa ilikuwa ni wakati ambapo saizi no sim fm ipo inaotangaza kwa lugha ki ya ki masai pale ndio ilikuwa ni radio taifa sasa anasema yeye alikuwa producer mm -hmm. anapajua vizuri na hapa ni nyumbani yuko sawa kabisa <laughs> bila shaka mtazamaji tunayemzungumzia simu mwingine bari ni Barak Muluka ambaye anashikilia PhD katika masuala politics na international relations kutoka mm -hmm. chuo kikuu cha Leicester na vile vile pia kumbuka amesomea ama na shahada mbalimbali kutoka University of Nairobi eh, kama vile ile ya mass communication and journalism na vile vile pia ana BA ama Bachelor of Arts katika linguistic na English nimekwambia ni mlumbi huyu bila kupoteza nukta sekunde wala dakika bwana Barak Muluka karibu radio taifa asante sana Rashid na asante pia Chozi <laughs> na furahi kwa hapa mlisahau kuniambia lakini mimi mwenyewe nimeingia katika zile hifadhi zangu na nimeona hapa ilikuwa ni blue production Okay. Uh, kwa hiyo <laughs> kama wananisikiza huko akina Leni Mwashegwa, akina Sera Kihara, Lena Kitheka na wengineo tulokuwa nao hapa mm -hmm. basi wanajua kwamba sasa niko hapa Blue Production mm -hmm. na wangekuja hapa wangeshangaa kuna mabadiliko makubwa sana maajabu ya ulimwengu. Yule alivyokuwa akisema nyakati zile Joe Biden kama mtu. <laughs> maajabu makubwa. <laughs> <laughs> Nikumbusha mbali zama za Joe Biden kama mtu hasa blue production imehamishwa pale ulipoingia pale nje sasa no. ndio blue production iko pale eh, memory iko sawa bwana karibu sana jiisi nyumbani na sisi tunafurahi leo kuzungumza nawe unajua tumekuwa tuki tukikusikia tunakukuangalia kwenye runinga lakini leo watatu sote tuko kwenye runinga basi hiyo ni mwafaka kabisa mm -hmm. labda tu kabla kuweza kusonga mbele bwana Muluka na kuingia kwenye siasa hii hatua ya waziri wa elimu ghafla bin vu kutamatisha kalenda jana leo unaichukuliaje wazazi wanateta sana wanasema kwamba ni ghafla eh, kwanza ni ghafla kwa sababu ya gharama zinazohusika uh, watoto wamerudi shuleni hivi majuzi tu na kuna gharama ambazo zimetumika kuweza kuwapeleka huko na pia baada ya muda mfupi tu tutasikia tena wanastahili wawe wakirudi e, pia ni gharama kuna vile ambavyo mzazi hujipanga hata mwingine akapanga kwamba watoto watakapokuwa wameondoka labda naye pia ameondoka wanaporudi pale kuna kuwa na shida changamoto za malezi na vitu vinginevyo lakini swala nyeti zaidi ya hayo ni kwamba inaelekea kwamba uchaguzi unatutatanisha mm -hmm. sisi ni watu ambao tumekuwa na upungufu wa imani katika sisi wenyewe ungedhani wakati uchaguzi unapokaribia kwamba kuna viumbe visivyojulikana vitakavyo tua hapa kutoka kwenye sayari nyingine tofauti na hivyo viumbe vitafika hapa na zana ambazo hazieleweki na huenda vikatuvamia na kutuumiza hivyo basi tuanza kuhangaika 
na kuanza kufikiri kwamba tujihifadhi namna gani na tujikidhi namna gani dhidi ya hivi viumbe visivyotajika vinavyotoka katika sayari isiyojulikana viumbe kutoka kwa anga za mbali anga za juu sio hata viumbe kutoka nchi za ugaibuni kwa sababu tumekuwa na tabia mbaya wakati uchaguzi unapofika na hata kabla ya uchaguzi mashindano yetu ni mashindano mabaya sio mashindano yanayoonyesha kwamba tunashindania kuweza kupata nafasi ya mamlaka ya uongozi na uongozi ambao tutaongoza kwa niaba ya wananchi na kwamba kile kilicho cha muhimu ni maslahi ya wananchi na maslahi ya taifa. Mm-hmm. Ni basi watoto wameambiwa warudi nyumbani na hatuwezi kujua kwamba kule kwenye baraza la mawaziri na katika ngazi za juu ni mambo yapi huwa yamezungumziwa ndio hatua ya aina hii hatua ya ibra ikawa inachukuliwa kwa sababu waziri hawezi kufunga shule peke yake ni kitu kizito ni kitu kikubwa ni kitu ambacho kimezungumziwa katika kumbi mbalimbali ndipo wakafika hapo wakasema basi tufunge shule je sasa sisi raia na watoto wetu hao wenyewe huko majumbani mwetu tujihisi vipi tuko salama au tuko vipi tungependa waziri anayehusika Dr. Fred Matiangi aweze kuhakikishia wananchi kwamba kuna usalama wa kutosha na hata rais pia aweze kuhakikisha kwamba kuna usalama wa kutosha na tukitoka hapo tuwalenge vigogo wale wa juu ambao wanawania uongozi hasa uongozi wa rais watuambie kwamba watadumisha amani na watuambie kwamba watuthibitishie kwamba wao wanafahamu vizuri kwamba huu uchaguzi si juu yao ni uchaguzi wa uongozi wetu aseme wazi kabisa dr william ruto kwamba mimi nitadumisha amani aseme vivyo hivyo bwana raila odinga kwamba mimi nitadumisha amani nitaheshimu sheria ambazo zimewekwa na iwapo sitaridhishwa na matokeo ya uchaguzi nitachukua hatua ambazo zinatambuliwa na sheria na nitajiweka chini ya sheria ambazo zimewekwa na uamuzi ambao utatolewa na vyombo vya kisheria na asasi za kisheria nitaheshimu hatustahili kuwa tunahangaika eti kwa sababu tunaenda kupiga kura kura ni kitu ambacho hutafutwa mataifa mengi ulimwenguni wametafuta nafasi ya kupiga kura ukienda kule Marekani utapata kwamba watu weusi hawakuwa na nafasi ya kupiga kura hadi baada ya mwaka wa 1968 wanawake hawakuwa wakipiga kura Marekani hadi mwaka wa 1928 na watu ambao hawana hela watu wasio na mali na mashamba makubwa makubwa kote Ulaya Marekani wameanza kupiga kura katika miongo tu ya hivi karibuni. Kwa hivyo hiki ni kitu ambacho watu wamekipigania na kikisha patikana tukitumia vizuri ni kama kisu. Mm. Ukikitumia vizuri kinakutumikia. Sasa ye, tumeona hivi karibuni maana yake tunaongea mambo ambayo pia yamejiri hapa yamekuwa ya kitrend sana. Ukizungumzia kisu kikitumia vizuri kikitakufanyia mambo mazuri. Tumeona Sonko kwamba ameanza kurusha mawe. E, huku azimio ambapo ametoka huku na uamuzi wa Sonko kuhamia kule Kenya kwanza je unadhania kwamba kutakuwa na ushawishi wowote ushawishi bila shaka yuko na watu wake ambao watapiga kura kuegemea na kwamba yuko wapi unajua tena mtazamaji na wenzangu tulio nao studio na msikilizaji ni kitu cha kushangaza sana kwamba katika taifa kama hili letu kuna watu ambao ni vigogo ambao ni mabwiji wa kikabila watu ambao wanachukuliwa kuwa viongozi wa magenge na kwamba kule anakoenda atafuatwa hata tunapozungumzia vyama vyenyewe vya kisiasa mara nyingi sivyo vyama ni makundi ya kigenge kama kule jeriko tulikolelewa sisi wengine sehemu za mashariki mashariki mwa 
Nairobi siku hizo kulikuwa magenge kulikuwa nasikia watu wanaitwa companieros watu wanajiita black september wengine wanajiita sicheki <coughs> wengine wanajiita <coughs> the egos and the heroes sijui nini na kila mmoja ilikuwa na team leader kiongozi na oda wake <coughs> na wangekusimamisha tu hata dada mrembo kama wewe hivi <coughs> na kuanza kukudhulumu au bwana kama huyu Rashida hapa mm. na kuanza kumpekua pekua kwenye mifuko yake na amebeba nini tumefika mahali kama hapo ndio unaona kwamba wakisema songo akienda huku ana wafuasi wake eti wataenda naye kalonzo akienda huku ati ana wafuasi wake unasikia wanasema kilonzo ndicho ndicho kijisehemu ambacho kilikuwa kimesalia peke yake mm. na sasa vile ameingia yeye yuko na kura moja itakuwaaje sasa eti vile yeye ameingia eti tumesha kwa sasa na hakika kwamba tutashinda eti mdavadi yuko hapa sasa tutashinda mm. eti sasa sijui ngilu yuko hapa sasa tutashinda hapana sisi sivyo si bidhaa vya hawa watu mwananchi ajue kwamba yeye si bidhaa au mali ya mtu yeyote dada chozi unaona nimekuwa na nilipoingia hapa una viatu vizuri sana <laughs> vinangara sana na hivyo viatu ni vyako we eh? ule nunua mm-hmm. unaweza kumpa mtu ukitaka mm-hmm. na unaweza hata kuvitupa au kuvisahau mm-hmm. hawa watu wanatumia vile mtu ambaye anahifadhi kitu chake kama viatu anaweza hata kumuzia shuba na ndebe mm-hmm. eh hata <laughs> kama ni vipya na dada yako akikwambia hivyo ni sana vipya sana nipatie mama wewe hapana mm-hmm. nataka kuuza kwa shuba na ndebe au nataka kupeana kwenye mtu fulani kwa mtu fulani hivyo ndivyo tulivyo tu na kwa kiasi kikubwa kuna uh, unafik mtu anaenda huko anasema huku ndio kuzuri kesho yeye amkia kule kwingine asema huku ndio kuzuri na sisi tunawafuata tu kama mbumbumbu mm. washenzi wasio na akili mm-hmm. kwa kuna swala bwana muluka linajitokeza hapa e kwanza niweze kukupongeza kwa sababu wakati ule tulikuoje kupitia nje ya simu kaimu mkuu wa idara ya radio katika shirika la utangazaji nchini akijulikana kama James Moura alisema alifurahia jinsi kwamba huegemei upande wowote na ni kitu ambacho ni adimu sana mm-hmm. sasa nirudi kwenye swali langu bwana muluka awali ulikuwa katibu mkuu wa chama cha Amani National Congress kabla kujitoa na umenyamaza sana sijui na huja onekana kuchukua msimamo ya mirengo ya kisiasa ama siasa zako wazifanyie vipi Uh, kila mkenya anafanya siasa tusidanganyane yule kwa mfano ambaye hata piga kura anafanya siasa siasa za kutopiga kura siasa za kuatathmini wale ambao watashiriki katika ugombezi na akaamua kwamba ye hata piga wakati asipopiga anapeana nafasi kwa watu fulani kuingia kwa wepesi ni kitu ambacho tungekieleza kwa kirefu kidogo lakini nafikiri kinaeleweka alafu sisi wengine ambao tunasalia eh aidha ni wakombezi au tutapiga kura na utampigia mtu kufuatana na vile umemweka kwenye mizani mm-hmm. ya, ya mambo ambayo unayapa kipaumbele na ukaona umpe huyo kura yako na kuna wale ambao wanateta ni watetezi wanamtetea huyu wanamtetea yule kisha kuna wale ambao ni kazi yao ni kutathmini na kudadisi na kueleza uma na kwa upande huo wa kueleza kutathmini nafikiri nimefanya kazi yangu vizuri tu sio lazima yote niseme pigia Ruto pigia Odinga pigia nani nasema pigia Kenya kuna kura pia ambayo unapigia Kenya. Na tungekuwa sisi ni watu wa kusema tunapigia Kenya kura. Hatungekuwa na hii waswasi tunayoiona. Tungekuwa tunaimba nyimbo nzuri za kusherehekea uhuru wetu na demokrasia yetu na kujitawala kwetu wenyewe na kusema kwamba tunashindana na yule atakayeshinda atakuwa ni wetu na yule atakayeshindwa 
pia ni wetu yule ambaye ameshindwa mm -hmm. tunamwambia pole lakini jaribu tena wakati mwingine umefanya vizuri ume, ni kama mchezo sports lakini kutokana na ukweli kwamba tunafanya huu uchaguzi kuwa ni kama uadui mm -hmm. inakuwa kwamba unasikia rafiki yangu na ni ndugu yangu pia uh, katibu mkuu wa chama cha wafanyakazi nchini France za Tuli anasema kateni miti kateni miti yote kuna watu watajinyonga sasa hilo haliwezi kusaidia una unawachochea wale ambao unawadhani watashindwa na wao pia wanakuchochea wakiona kwamba wanaenda kushindwa wanaposema huyu mzee tumweke kwenye wilbaro tumpeleke nyumbani bondo na huyu anasema huyu tumfukuze tumpeleke kule surugoi asionekane tena na tutamnyang'anya kila kitu alicho nacho eh ni uchochezi ndio huo baada ya kura ya hasa ya urais kuisha atakayekuwa ameshindwa atakuwa nasikia uchungu sana na huo uchungu ndio huwa chanzo cha mizozo inakuwa vizuri tukikubaliana kwamba tunashindana tunatafuta uongozi atakayepata atapata atakayekosa atakosa na kama bado yuko hai ajaribu tena mwaka mwingine na wananchi wakiona kwamba wana rai na yeye wanaweza wakampao wengine nao wawe wakishiriki tu kwa sababu sasa imekuwa ni mazoea wanashiriki tu ku, kusindikiza eh? kusindikiza wengine wakija wapya na wewe una escort unakuwa Ford Escort una escort <laughs> Na msikilizaji ikiwa zimekatika ama zimesalia dakika tatu itimie nusu saa baada ya saa mbili tutakuwa tunakwenda kwenye mapumziko mafupi lakini kwa sasa hivi msikilizaji pia tuko na daktari Barak Muluka ambaye ndio mchanganuzi wetu wa masuala ya kisiasa asubuhi hii leo na tunataka kujua mengi tu kuhusu yale ambayo yanajiri na yanaendelea katika uh, serikali yetu na nikiendelea tuna swali moja kabla tuje kwenda kwenye mapumziko je Kenya tunaendeleaje tumeimarika ikija ni swala la kampeni na uchaguzi tumeimarika na tukaimarika kupendukia wajua uh, nimebahatika kuweza kuwa na kumbukumbu za chaguzi nyingi uchaguzi wa kwanza ninao kumbuka kabisa ni uchaguzi wa mwaka wa 1969 1969 nikiwa mtoto mdogo kisoma shule ya msingi ya ufafajeriko hapa Nairobi kwa na waona kina kibaki kule bahati Jail Mbogo Fredo Mido maeneo ya Mbakasi tulikuwa tunaona kina Godfrey Muhuri Mwangi Karungaru hapa starehe tulikuwa tunaona Charles Rubia na bwana mmoja alikuwa anaitwa Kinyanjui mm -hmm. na wengineo kuanzia mwaka ule kwa hivyo 69 74 79 83 88 92 97 2000 and, uh, and, and two, 2007 2013 2017 ni 2022 huu ni uchaguzi wa 12 ambao nina ushuhudia uh -huh. uh, katika nchi yetu na naweza kusema tumepiga hatua hasa kule kuweza kupeana nafasi kwa mtu yeyote anayetaka kugombea gombee tumebobea kuna nafasi za kidemokrasia uh, na kuna nafasi ya kila mtu anayetaka kusajiliwa na kwenda kupiga kura lakini kuna vile ambavyo tumeviharibu nyakati zile watu walikuwa hata wanaenda kwa jukwaa moja kwa jukwaa moja same platform mm. na mnawania kiti chicho hicho na kila mtu anajieleza vile ambavyo nimeona vyombo vya habari vimekuwa vinawaita pamoja e, wanawapa midahalo mm. hivi mm -hmm. lakini unaona hawataki hiyo midahalo kila mtu anajihisi kuwa maarufu sana anapokuwa peke yake akitamba peke yake kina wanapoambiwa njoni kwa midahalo 
unaona wajakoya anadinda unamuona Raila Odinga anadinda ina staili tuje hapo kwenye hii midahalo ndipo tuwe tunapeana ishara kwamba sisi sote ni taifa moja sisi sote ni tunda la nchi yetu na nchi ni kitu ambacho tumezawadiwa na Mwenyezi Mungu na wale walio tutangulia kwa hivyo tuilinde vizuri tuje tushindane kwa mawazo kwa sera na kisha baada ya hapo tupeane uamuzi kwa wananchi labda vile ninavyovizungumzia ni vitu vya kufikirika tu alivyosema Shaban bin 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 Robert ni vitu vya kusadikika tu lakini ni vitu ambavyo vinafanyika eh kwingineko ukienda kama kule Finland kwa mfano tu utapata kwamba hata campaign kama hizi ambazo tunaziona watu wakizunguka zunguka na kupeana pesa hongo na nini hazipo mtu unakuja katika chombo cha habari unajieleza na watazamaji wanakusikiza ndio campaign zinafanywa huko e, kisha siku ya kupiga kura wewe uh-huh. e, unasema e, nambari yangu itakuwa 23 kwa hivyo unapoenda huko weka namba 23 watu wanajua hakuna hii wasiwasi hizi washawasha tumezunguka miaka minne eh tumezunguka miaka minne na nusu na hata si miaka minne miaka kumi kwa sababu walipoanza hawa wasijui walikuwa URP na TNA mm. Rais Kenyatta alikuwa anasema kumi yangu kumi ya Ruto hivyo mm. ni kuonyesha kwamba tulikuwa tayari tumeanza ya 2022 na Odinga alikuwa anaambiwa wewe ngojea 2032 ndio ujaribu tena ah vimekuwa ni vingi sana hasa hivi vya urais hata sasa dada chozi na ndugu Rashid mm-hmm. tumefika mahali ambapo inaonekana ni uchaguzi wa urais tu katika taifa zima tukizungumza tunapozungumzia uchaguzi ujao ni kama watu tunaozungumzia tu uchaguzi wa urais mm-hmm. tumesahau kuna magavana mm-hmm. 47 kuna maseneta pokuwa tu hapa Nairobi ndio niliona kidogo <laughs> eh? <laughs> mambo ya governor mm-hmm. eh? na kule kwetu Kakamega wakazungumzia zungumzia kidogo tumesahau kuna wabunge wa wabunge la kitaifa kuna wawakilishi wa wanawake kuna county assemblies ni kwa nini mawazo yetu yafungwe kwa kitu kimoja tu urais mm-hmm hata kuna wanahabari wa kigeni wamefika hapa Nairobi mm-hmm. wengine wameshaingia mashinani lengo lao ni kuangalia tu hawa wa Kenya watapigana tena kwa sababu ya uchaguzi wa urais mm-hmm. hakuna kitu kingine ambacho kimewaleta hapa mm-hmm. wametoka Australia Ujerumani wametoka Timbuktu Komju huko Mali mm-hmm. wametoka kila mahali kuja kuangalia kama sisi tutazozana na kupigana hata kwa sababu ya uchaguzi wa urais na sisi pia ni kama tunatayarisha uwanja waziri wa elimu anaambiwa watoto sasa ondokeni kwenye uwanja e, fujo fujo huenda zikaja mrudi nyumbani hapana e, mimi ingawa mjaniambia niseme hili neno la mwisho ambalo nitasema baadaye lakini lazima nilipe kipaumbele mwambie mkenya huu oh, uchaguzi mtu asikutumie kuzusha ghasia mm-hmm. ukizusha ghasia wewe ndio mjinga mpumbavu wa mwisho hivi vitu wanavyofanya wanasiasa mara nyingi ni vyao isingekuwa ni vyao dada chozi mm-hmm. usingemuona mata karua na Raila Odinga mm-hmm. Raila Odinga na Uhuru Kenyatta William Ruto na Msalia Mdavadi wa Moses Wetangula na William Ruto Charity Ngilu na Uhuru Kenyatta Kivutha Kibwana mm. na Raila Odinga Ah Sisi ambao tumesafiri na watu kutoka huko tunawaangalia <laughs> imekuaje <laughs> Na sasa wewe unaenda ati kuwapigania 
wewe ni mjinga kabisa <laughs> Haya msikilizaji wa KBC Radio Taifa Sauti ya Mkenya iko hivi sasa ni saa tatu bado dakika ya 23 sasa Afrika Mashariki kumbuka studioni tuko naye mchanganuzi wa masuala ya kisiasa mwandishi mkubwa wa habari na vile vile pia mlumbi katika lugha zote mbili nikizungumzia lugha rasmi ya Kiingereza humo nchini na lugha sanifu ya taifa ya Kiswahili bwana Barak Muluka ambaye ana tema cheche za madini hapa ndani ya studio na nimesahau kubeba kamusi kwa sababu kuna mengine hapa yanipita kweli mtazamaji kumbuka pia vile vile unatazama kipindi hiki kupitia Good Morning Kenya upande wa pili wa studio labda tuchoze tupeleke mapumziko tutakaporudi tutasonga mbele na msikilizaji tunakwenda kwenye mapumziko mafupi tutakaporudi kumbuke ya kwamba nambari zetu ziko wazi 0700176699 vile vile kwenye mitandao yetu ya kijamii unatupata vizuri @mwajumachozi @mwamkondo @radio taifa hashtag ni mbili hashtag #zinga hashtag #good morning kenya na tutakaporudi tutataka kujua mengi zaidi e, kuhusu vile ambavyo Rais Uhuru Kenyatta pia anapigia debe sana e, kiongozi Raila Odinga je unalichukulia namna gani msikilizaji mapumziko mafupi as the enigma in Kenyan politics for 50 years Kenyans have wandered in the wilderness his critics are as eloquent as his supporters are in their praise when it was in the interest of the country that it was important for him to work with Kanu for the benefit of the country he did that as a seasoned politician his tab at the presidency has been a case of so near yet so far they now have an opportunity through these elections but who is this man Raila Odinga through the eyes of the Kenyan youth no wait dad are you going to leave me alone You said that you were going to stay here. Don't do this to me. Nadia, this is an emergency. It's about my son. What happened to me is also an emergency. And how did you find out about it? I never stopped looking for you, Monica. Have you been watching the lives of everyone here all this time? Yes. I feel degraded because of it. What I feel right now is anger. I'm angry and I feel stupid for not realizing early enough that Lino had been going to bed with that woman for more than 4 years, mom. This isn't about what you want. It's about who you love. The 2022 Commonwealth Games will be hosted in Birmingham, United Kingdom from the 28th of July through the 8th of August 2022. Team Kenya is set to make its 17th appearance at the Games. Kenya will contest for medals in several disciplines among them athletics, boxing, hockey, rugby, weightlifting, wheelchair basketball and para sports among others. Watch the games live on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner.
Naam so daktari kabisa mtazamaji wa KBC Channel 1 ndani ya kipindi Good Morning Kenya karibu tena ikiwa ni dakika ishirini na moja zimesalia kuweza kutimia saa tatu asubuhi e, hii ni KBC Radio Taifa Sauti ya Kenya kipindi hewani ni zinga na studio ni tuko naye mchanganuzi wa masuala ya kisiasa mlumbi wa lugha bwana Barak Muluka tukiweza kuzungumzia siasa za mwaka 2022 tukiwa tumesalia tuna siku sita kabla ya uchaguzi sisi ni watangazaji wako jina langu naitwa Rashid Mumkondo Asante sana msikilizaji kwa kuchagua KBC Radio Taifa kwa kufungulia zinga asubuhi hii ya leo kwa kufungulia runinga yako ya KBC Channel 1 kwa makahakika hatutokuangusha kwa njia yoyote ile na ndani ya nyumba leo hii tunaye daktari Barak Muluka ambaye ndio mchanganuzi wetu wa kisiasa tukiangazia mambo mbali mbali ambayo yamekuwa yakiendelea katika nchi yetu hii na labda katika lile swali ambalo nilikuwa nimeliuliza kabla sijafikia hapo kuna haya malumbano ambayo yapo kati ya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Uh, kiongozi ama naibu wake uh, William Ruto unaambiwa kwamba kuna mvuvi ambaye atakuwa na, anafurahia eh huyu mvuvi ambaye anafurahia kwa, kwa maoni yako ni yapi kwa sababu kuna utafiti ambao wameshamtaja wameshamtaja huyu kiongozi anasema sasa hawa wawili furaha yao wakigombana hawa furaha ya mvuvi mvuvi ni huyu sasa wewe labda kwa maoni yako haya malumbano je kweli kuna faida huko chini e, vita vya kunguru <laughs> ni furaha ya pan, vita vya panzi mm-hmm. e, na unaona kidogo nakuwa kama yule dada wa Vinyandeti mm-hmm. yule alisema yaliondwele sipiti <laughs> e, na nasema vita vya kunguru lakini ni vita vya panzi mm-hmm. e, panzi ni aina ya mdudu ni kama nzige hivi mm-hmm. e, vita vya panzi ni furaha ya kunguru wakati alipoingia Raila Odinga uh, kwenye hii handshake yake na Rais Uhuru Kenyatta tukiwa wadadisi wa maneno uh, matukio tuliweza kudadisi kwamba ifiki hapo uchaguzi mkuu utakaofuata Rais Kenyatta na naibu wake watakuwa wametengana kabisa yeye hakuenda katika hiyo handshake akiwa na nia ya kuwapatanisha awalete pamoja walikuwa ni watu ambao wamemshinda katika uchaguzi na akawa anatafuta mbinu mpya ya kuweza kujikita pale eh, katika mashindano au ushindani wa baadaye na ikaonekana kwamba kuna kule kuagawa watu unawagawanya unawatenganisha kisha unawatawala divide and rule na lazima hapo tumvulie Raila Odinga kofia <laughs> hata mimi nimeshavua yangu iko hapa hivi <laughs> kwa hiyo unasema huyu ndio mvuvi <laughs> lazima, lazima umvulie eh? kofia na ni kitu ambacho ameki ameamesha shamiri sana katika kukitenda kwani itakumbukwa kwamba baada ya uchaguzi wa mwaka 1997 uh-huh. aliweza kumkaribia rais Moi na akaingia katika chama cha Kanu na akakivuruga akatoka huko na wajumbe na wafuasi na walipojiunga tu na rais Moi kibaki ambaye wakati huo hakuwa rais lakini uh-huh. alikuwa naye pia anajitayarisha basi wakakicharaza chama cha Kanu bara bara <laughs> na hata maumivu ya hayo mapigo uh-huh. walionyorosha Kanu miaka ishirini iliyopita uh-huh. bado Kanu ina hayo maumivu uh-huh. kwa hivyo alipoingia pale alikuwa na hilo lengo la kuweza kuwatenganisha na wakatenganika na kufikia mahali ambapo rais anampigia debe dhidi ya naibu wake mm-hmm. pamoja na hayo haya malumbano yao mahali pa hadhara si kitu kizuri watu huko sana watu kosa kuelewana hata nyumbani wakati watu wanapofunga pingu za maisha tunawaambia kwamba hata mkigombana mgombane kwenye vyumba vilivyo ndani vile vyumba <laughs> fitu vile vya kulala mkisikia mtu anabisha kwenye mlango kokoko 
pas mnayafuta machozi na kuja mnata mnacheka mnata mm. basamu <laughs> eh mm-hmm. huyu mtu na kule kucheka huenda kukawarudisha pamoja mm-hmm. lakini hata wasipowarudisha pamoja anapoondoka wageni unarudi unamuuliza eh ulikuwa umesema namna gani eh mnaendelea na ule ugomvi wenu lakini huu mori tunaona umpasuko mchipuko mlipuko Ah, ni mbaya mm-hmm. na ni vitu kama hivyo ambavyo huchochea na raia pia wao ikiwa baba na mama wanagombana nyakati zote e, mbele za watoto e, watoto wanachukua pia msimamo mm-hmm. ah wanasema mama ndio mbaya au mwingine anasema baba huyu baba ni mbaya mm-hmm. basi familia hiyo inasambaratika ingekuwa vizuri tu wange fanya hivyo vitu kule ndani na kuja nje wakionyesha uh, sura tofauti sikwai kumuona rais moi akilumbana na um, yeyote sio tu naibu wake mm-hmm. na sikuona manaibu wake wakilumbana na yeye lakini yeye alikuwa na uwezo wa kuafuta kazi Mm-hmm. Ya, sasa kwa hiyo kwenye u... malumbano unafutwa kazi unaenda zako unaenda zako mm-hmm. na naposema mambo yako umeshafukuzwa lakini sasa rais uhuru mm-hmm. hana hiyo nafasi au uwezo wa <laughs> kumfuta kazi naibu wake mm-hmm. kwa hivyo anakuja mahali pa uma na kupasuka pasuka naye huyu anajua kwamba hawezi kunipiga kalamu mm-hmm. naye pia anarudi ni tatizo ambalo nafikiri tutaendelea kuliona Bwana Muluka kuna swali hapa mmoja ameliuliza lakini kabla ile swali nadhani kwamba manifesto za wagombeaji wote wanne wa rais umezipitia nataka utuambie je wengi wameku, wao wote wamekuwa kizungumzia kuhusiana na swala la ufisadi je kati ya wagombeaji wanne nani kweli ameeleza vizuri kuhusiana na vita hivyo lakini kuna mmoja hapa anaitwa Dennis Mamai Maina kwenye ukurasa wetu wa Facebook KBC Radio Taifa Rashid kuna jambo fichi hapo hebu muulize bwana Muluka mimi namheshimu sana lakini anayegemea upande upi kwa sababu mara kwa mara namuona kwa makazi ya naibu rais <laughs> yeye uingiaje kwa makazi <laughs> ya naibu wa rais <laughs> yeye huwa ameenda kwa makazi ya naibu wa rais kufanya nini ndio <laughs> ilikuwaje <laughs> <Ndiyo> tuka, <laughs> tukakutana huko tukaonana na yeye alikuja kukuangalia alikuja, kama kweli umekaa na alipitia wapi <laughs> <laughs> makazi ya naibu wa rais ni soko la Kariako <laughs> au Bama Market <laughs> ambayo watu wataingia tu na kuona wengine eti wamekuja huko <laughs> na ingekuwa kweli kama tunakutana huko tunge ningemuuliza lakini sio ukweli lakini ingekuwa ukweli mm. ningemuuliza vile wanapouliza wale wachawi ambao ukimbia nje usiku <laughs> ukija ukisema huyu ni mlimuona ni mchawi huwa anakimbia huko usiku utaulizwa na wewe ulikuwa unafanya nini huko huo usiku <laughs> au ukienda ukisema huyu nilimuona kwenye vile vyumba vya starehe eh huyu eh, nilimuona mimi hakusema ati anaonekana alisema nilimuona mm. nilimuona kule utajua kuna vyumba vya starehe huko <laughs> watu wenda huko kufanya mambo ya uzinzi na vitu vinginevyo vya aina hiyo mm-hmm. sasa unasema huyu eh, mke wako eh, anapenda sana huko kwenye hivyo vyumba vya starehe huko huyu bwana yako na wewe ulijuaje mm-hmm. ulikuwa unafanya nini tuachane na hayo tujibu maswali yaliyo mazito mm-hmm. uh, ufisadi umeuliza ni manifesto ipi ambayo imeshambulia na kupeana mpango barabara jibu ni kwamba hakuna mm. wajakoya amesema atawanyongelea mbali bado uh, wajakoya yuko kwa merry go round mm-hmm. yeye yeah, anasikia vizuri tu ana <laughs> enjoy <laughs> anasema vitu ambavyo haviwezekani mm-hmm. uh, anasema kwamba ataondoa katiba ili apate hiyo nafasi katiba ataiondoa akitumia sheria ipi mm-hmm. kuondoa katiba ndio afanye vitu yeye 
yuko kwa kitu kinacho itwa kujiburudisha kufurahi mm hii -hmm. safari mnajua mnapokuwa kwenye safari kuna wale ambao wanajishirikisha ili waweze tu kujiburudisha mm -hmm. na kujienjoy na kujulikana ufisadi kama kungekuwa manifesto ambayo ingesema kwamba kitu cha kwanza itakachofanya ni kuangalia ile ripoti ya Bethel Kiplagat ya ukweli haki na maridhiano na ingesema kwamba sasa wako tayari kuanza kwa sababu hiyo ripoti ndio ina visa vyote vya ufisadi na wizi ujambazi na watu ambao wako mamlakani kuanzia enzi za ukoloni kuja enzi ya hayati rais mwanzilishi mzee Jomo Kenyatta kuja kwa enzi ya rais Moi enzi ya Mwai Kibaki na ukishafika hapo kuna njia ya kuonyesha kwamba nayo enzi ya rais Uhuru Kenyatta imeingilia wapi wangeanza na TJRC uh -huh. lakini hawawezi kwa hiyo kiufupi bwana Barack unasema kwamba hizi manifesto za wanne hawa hakuna hata mmoja ambaye ameweza kuangazia swala la ufisadi vile ambavyo inatakana hapana hivyo ni vitu tu vishawishi shawishi tu hivi vya kuambia kwamba eti kutakuwa zero tolerance zero, zero tolerance na tayari una tolerate zile vitu ambazo vitu ambavyo vimeandikwa katika TJRC mm -hmm. mashamba makubwa makubwa humu nchini wale ambao waliiba waliua ndovu zetu na wanyama wengineo porini na kubeba pembe za ndovu na kuwauza Ulaya wale ambao walikuwa wamehusika katika magendo ya korosho kule pwani mambo ya mahindi tangu enzi za kina Paul Ngei wale walioshiriki tunapozungumzia maze scandal zilianza katika siku za kina Paul Ngei na wazee ambao wanasikiza na wasome najua wanaelewa kwamba Luka anasema ukweli mambo ya kahawa kutoka kule Uganda vizungumziwe mambo ya kuporomoshwa kwa shirika la reli ambalo lilikuwa ni shirika kuu kabisa katika nchi hii yetu mambo ya kuporomoshwa ya shirika la posta mambo ya wizi wa nyumba za serikali katika mji wa Nairobi mji wa Mombasa mji wa Nakuru nyumba za reli ambazo zimenyakuliwa na hawa watu wote wakiwamu pamoja na wale ambao wanazungumza sana wakati huu wakisema wizi 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 mambo ya mashamba katika Kenya ya kati yaliyonyakuliwa na familia chache mm -hmm. vitu kama hivyo unapoanza kuvizungumzia nitakuamini kwamba wewe unazungumza na kusema ukweli uzungumzie ndongo land commission report mm -hmm. useme vile utafanya uzungumzie the golden bag report golden bag report katika ukurasa wa tatu umeweka hapo majina ya watu ambao walihusika na golden bag wanajulikana ni mm. akina nani na kama wewe umeketi nao pembeni mm. unapiga mdomo na kusema kwamba utapambana na ufisadi mm -hmm. na umevilete hapa katika manifesto unamdanganya nani mm -hmm. utadanganya watu lakini mimi huta ni danganya na kupitia kwangu huta danganya wa Kenya hakuna mm -hmm. manifesto Mm -hmm. ambayo imezungumzia mambo ya ufisadi kwa njia inayoweza kuaminika. Na msikilizaji kabla hatujakupa wakati na wewe pia ukaweza kuliza swali lako. Labda unadhania kwamba uchaguzi wa mwaka huu na chaguzi zingine ukizilinganisha kutakuwa na utofauti wowote? Hakuna tofauti kubwa isipokuwa niseme kwamba zile chaguzi za miaka tangulizi mm -hmm. zilikuwa chaguzi bora zaidi mm -hmm. kuliko uchaguzi kama ule ambao tunaenda kufanya mwaka huu kwa sababu tuliwachagua watu kuambatana na maono yao mm -hmm. kuambatana na uadilifu wao na rai yao mimi nilikuwa nawakilishwa katika sehemu ya butere na Martin Shikuku na hakuna siku ambayo Shikuku nilimuona akipatia mtie yote hata shilingi moja hata senti kumi senti tano ili wampigie kura siku hizi 
na wakati mwingi sana siku hizi naotumia nikiwa nyumbani kwetu Emanyulia sababu miaka 40 imeisha tangu nilipoingia hapa broadcasting house kuanza kazi ya utangazaji hivyo sasa lazima nianze ku behave like somebody who is retiring if not someone who is retired huchaguzi dada chozi unaona kila mahali wanawake wanakimbia wamebeba watoto na maleso wanakimbia sijui nani anakuja twende tupewe mia, mia twende tupewe mia mbili mm. wakitoka huko wanaenda huku kuna watu wanakuambia ah hiyo kanisa itakupigia kura <laughs> eh hujatupatia <laughs> kitu eh ah utajipigia mwenyewe hilo gari lako ambalo umejifungia huko na vio ambavyo vimekuficha huko ndani litakupigia kura ah sasa ni mnada Mm. ni uchaguzi wa viongozi ni nini bwana bo, bo, barak e, dakika zinakimbia hapa kama utadhani ni mwanariadha wetu hapa fedi na manyala akikimbia mbio za mita moja sijui umeridhishwa na mipangilio ya asasi mbalimbali ya uchaguzi na hususan asasi ya usalama bwana chepkati ametuambia kwamba yuko tayari nafikiri yuko tayari kuambatana na mazingira ambayo anahudumia. Kwa IBC kwa tayari. IBC wako tayari. Mm-hmm. Wamesha sajili wapiga kura. Wamesha nunua vitu vya kimitambo vinavyohitajika. Mm-hmm. Wamesha chapisha uh, zile safu za kupiga kura. Uh, wana madebe yao yale ya kuweka kura. Uh-huh. washawasiliana na asasi nyinginezo husika kama communications authority kama uh, ministry of interior kupitia vyombo vyake shirika la la la, la, la utumishi wa, wa polisi na wengineo nafikiri acha tukubaliane kwamba wako tayari kufanya uchaguzi na hakuna uchaguzi ambao hawezi kuwa na dosari Hmm. hata kule amerikani tumeona wakiwa demokrasia kubwa kuna kwa madoa dosari na kukiwa dosari kwa sababu tunaona kuna mahali fulani walifeli kuna mikakati ya kisheria ambayo imewekwa na tutumie hiyo mikakati ya kisheria tupitie kwenye mahakama tutafute kubatilishwa na pia tunapozungumzia kuwa tayari Tukumbushane kwamba kuna viti visivyopungua 1800 nafikiri ni 1800 na 80 na viwili ambavyo watu wanagombea mm-hmm. kiti cha urais ni kimoja tu kati ya hivyo viti 1800 na 82 na kuna viti 1400 na hamsini ya county assemblies kuna viti 47 kila kimoja cha wanawake cha seneta na cha governors kisha kuna viti eh, 290 vya wabunge hivi unaposema kwamba uchaguzi huu utakuwa mbaya ni hivyo viti vyote au ni wadhifa mmoja tu kama ukija kisa central kule kwetu iwe ina matatizo si wale waliohusika wataenda kwenye mahakama kufanya petition na hawezi kuchukua hicho kiti wakasema uchaguzi wote ni mbaya you can't you can't do that No, na bwana barak naomba tu tupate pumziko fupi alafu tutarudi tena baada taarifa ya habari na muona mwenzangu bana maranga tayari yuko eh, chonjo kuweza kutuletea taarifa ya habari ya saa tatu mtazamaji unaendelea kuitazama runinga ya KBC channel 1 kipindi good morning kenya na upande wetu ni zinga kupitia KBC radio taifa sauti ya mkenya na studio ni tuko naye mchanganuzi wa maswala ya kisiasa ambaye ni mpole kama anavyozungumza maneno yake pole pole taratibu hapendi mshike mshike tunachukua 
mapumziko fupi tutakaporudi baada ya taarifa ya habari tutasonga mbele bado kuna maswali mengi sana hapa tungependa kumuuliza na vile vile pia mtazamaji tutakushirikisha we moja kwa moja page yetu au kurasa wetu wa Facebook KBC Radio Taifa Sauti ya Kenya KBC TV na kwenye Twitter at Radio Taifa FM at Mkondo at Barak Moloka at Mwajuma Chozi at KBC Channel 1 lakini kwa sasa tunaenda mapumziko takaporudi taarifa ya habari mimi naitwa Rashid Mkondo Mwajuma Chozi described himself as a man on a mission i am a man on a mission i have no space to retreat and i don't have the luxury to surrender as a presidential runner in the 2022 elections he has repeatedly referred to himself as a hustler you are the hustler number one <laughs> but who is this man <laughs> <laughs> William Bruto through the eyes of the Monanchi No wait dad are you going to leave me alone You said that you were going to stay here don't do this to me No yeah this is an emergency it's about my son What happened to me is also an emergency And how did you find out about it I never stop looking for you, Monica. Have you been watching the lives of everyone here all this time? Yes. I feel degraded because of it. What I feel right now is anger. I'm angry and I feel stupid for not realizing early enough that Lionel had been going to bed with that woman for more than 4 years, mom. This isn't about what you want. It's about who you love. genital mutilation is one practice you know just in various parts of this country different counties with prevalence being in places such as Kisi, Embu, Meru, Taita Taveta and even Kuria. Tunataka kuheshimu mila zetu. Lakini ndio tuweze kuheshimu mila zetu. Lazima pia tukae na tuseme zile mila ambazo zaumiza watoto wetu tuachane nazo. Lakini zile mila ambazo ni za manufaa kwa watoto wetu tuendelee nazo. The government has also made various strides with the notion of wanting to stop this practice by 2022. When he instructed us with the shebesh that the target of 2022 to have zero cases of FGM is your plan and we are trying to execute it. but your excellency you know this cannot be done alone first let me thank the elders because when they signed the declaration in the state house about two years ago that was one of the new things that we as a intervention because fighting fgm requires several interventions one of the intervention is where we brought in elders because they are the decision makers In this documentary we learn about Nilisema nataka kukeketwa. Alishika hiyo maneno kutoka kwa nyanya yake akaja naye kutuambia ati eh yeye anataka. Tulienda tukakeketa mchana mmoja akamblindi 
we sensitize them about the dangers of FGM. And now, I'm in Tarakanithi County to find out if the government interventions are bearing fruits. I got an appointment with Fides Kithinji, a reformed ex cata who practiced FGM for decades. She underwent the cut. According to Fides, it was more of a ceremony than an event. Sasa, wakati uni, wakati atokimona Naimulango. Poverty made Fides to become a cutter. Sasa nikaona sasa wasa ni nione kama nikitahidi nitaweza pata pesa. Mm-hmm. Eh sasa mm-hmm. nikaanja hapo umumu nikapuatilia wale walikuwa na barua. Mm-hmm. Wajua huku kutahidi chamani mm-hmm. ilikuwa ukienda uki, uki, uki kutahidi na unapea una, 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 una pichibu pesa. Una, una kupatia barua unaenda kutahidi na. Mm-hmm. Sasa kwa huyu hapata ile barua utaenda hivyo utakuwa ukienda Bida amuke, asubuza kumu na bidi, kumu metaidi. No me malisa. No me malisa no na pewa kitu. For one to qualify as a cutter, one had to cut at least ten young ladies. Ah, uh, wajua, udikuwa na saidi ke, una taidi kisiri siri, akuna mtu anajua kama una taidi. Unaenda, una taidi. Una kujua, una taidi, una, una rundi. Sasa, ukirundi vire, wajua ni, ni kama vire una, una pewa mutiani unapita. Sasa ukipita ukikuwa na watu kumi wako sasa hiyo ndio una, una kama unafunuliwa una unapatiana una ile sakura wanakura labu wanakwambia sasa wewe endelea endelea kabisa ni kama vile una, unafanya mtihani wa form 4 kama ukapita uende university Later on on the day I received a call from Sara Karimi from Kirimangare village Kanjuki sublocation. She is one of the few women who voluntarily went for the cut. Nilisema nataka kukeketa. Ukeketaji ulikuwa mwingi na ilikuwa ni passion. So kama hujakeketwa hauna company. Mtu anakaa for how long? Ya rudi kwa sawa kabisa ile mpaka anaweza kutoka nje nje atembea ndio na shughuli zake kitaenda. Utakaa mwezi. Eh Uh-huh. 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 kuna mambo mingi walikuwa anafanya. Utaletoa watu hata kwa kuchape. Uko na kindonda na utachapwa. Utaambua kama ni mambo ya kuheshimu mama mwenye amekuwa sapota wako. Utaambua mambo ya kama unapita njiani 
ukutane na wazazi wako unapaa wewe unaingia kwa kichaka wanapita upusi mwingi <laughs> peer pressure also pushed her to go for the cut wakati niko ndarasani nilikuwa na stress sababu naona wenzangu wameenda kuolewa kama rafiki yangu nakumbuka kuna mmoja aliolewa tu vile bila tu, tu sasa tuli rundi mashuleni yeye akakuwa tayari alikuwa na boyfriend lakini sasa bila amepita ame hiyo section sasa amekuwa sawa so akakuwa ameolewa kwa na mtoto bado mimi hata sijamaliza class 8 bado naendelea na masomo so nilikuwa naona ni stress kubwa Simon Jagging Kathu is a community leader in Kirimangare village wanajaribu ku yani kuendelea kuendelea ama kuendesha ile ile man, nini utamaduni wao hiyo kazi mimi sitaifanya maana niliona aina 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 kitu ama haina faida yoyote kwangu na kama mtu akija kwangu kuniambia ati nataka nataka ni nataka barua niende uende unishukulia barua kwa chief ama kwa assistant chief ili nipate nafasi ya kuni ya, ya kukiketa mtisana wangu hiyo kitu mimi nakataa na tena hiyo kama kiendelea na hiyo kazi na nikipata ate ame, ujo msana amekeketwa mimi napiga ripoti kwa authority alafu majukumu nashukuliwa na serikali kusema kweli mimi sioni kama kuna kitu ambayo kinaendelea e, kiko muhimu sana kwa kukiketa msana mbali ni asara tupu a few meters away i met grace josfort a reformed ex cutter who practiced fgm for over 10 years tu kuanzia 1979 tukaenda tukaenda mpaka hata mimi akanipundisha kukeketa akitengenezewa pombe akikunywa akalewa ananiambia sasa nilikupundisha saa hii wewe utafanya hii kasi tulienda tukakeketa mchana mmoja akamblindi kwa ndamu kwa wingi nikaangalia nikaona he na hii ni maneno ya kufungwa una, una nikafikiria nikaanza kutetemeka nikaona hii maneno hii serikali ikijua tutapungwa mimi nikaolewa nikaolewa na pasta nikiolewa na pasta akaniambia sasa hii maneno sitakubaliana na hii maneno hata nikiwa mi na keketa nilikuwa naona ni maneno sio mzuri government interventions to stop fgm has attracted support from non governmental organizations we met faith regional director plan international based in tarakanithi county a lot of progress has been achieved to answer indication of the practice with um, a lot of emphasis on uh, working with locals mainly the role models women and men that are in support of ending the practice women that have progressed well in their career and have not gone through fgm and others that have gone through fgm are career women but are against the practice and have been able to stop the practice in their own families so those are the people that we've been working with there are a lot of awareness campaigns that have been held at the community level a lot of uh, government structures have also been supported especially strengthening the court users committees working with the area advisory councils training the police officers mainly to ensure that they understand the need for issues of child protection because fgm falls under violation of children's rights as well as a form of gender based violence so as much as there is that much that the organization has done in reducing the practice from uh, 58% in uh, 2014 to 48% as at last year a lot more needs to be done now that um, 
comparing the, the prevalence in the Rakanithi County and the national prevalence of 21%, we are way above the national average with around 27%. A lot more needs to be done in um, eradicating the practice which is quite deep -rooted. And um, as much as the government is committed to ending the practice in 2022, there is quite some good trial in terms of uh, the government agencies supporting the presidential directive, but there is a lot more that needs to be done by everyone to ensure that the practice is eradicated in 2022. Some children were actually rescued by Plan International, mm. them that were to undergo the cut, and then they picked them. Those are the girls that they, they, they hold seminars for, they sensitize, we sensitize them about the dangers of FGM as a woman, as a girl, and even to the education sector. Uh, it's, it's dangerous to them. We've, we've held so many seminars and we've taught. We've taught well about it. And for sure, a, a large percentage is now in schools as a result of those if you compare FGM prevalence, especially across the county, areas where the literacy levels are very high, people have gone to school, people are in charge, people are not poor, the FGM levels are very low. But where the poverty levels are high, there are high levels of illiteracy, then FGM is high. So if we fight poverty, then it will definitely address issues of FGM because parents will have you know, they will be financially stable. They can be able to take their children through schools. There is that level of exposure that comes up with the improved level standards of living. There is that interaction with the outside world that brings in the natural transformation from embracing the cultural practices that are retrogressive to encouraging education, you know, to encouraging support of education and ends eradication of FGM in an area. My visit to the Rakanithi County left me with hope. A hope that come 2022, FGM prevalence will be zero. A hope that girls will be given equal opportunity in the society. I will visit Tharaka again. kibao kitambo sana sana ipe itande na juta mtazamaji wa KBC Channel 1 baada kumwangalia Dorin pale akifanya vitu vyake karibu tena basi kwenye awamu ya lala kwa mkono wa Buriani ghalabu sio Biriani ndani ya KBC Radio Taifa Sauti ya Kenya na vile vile pia ndani ya KBC Channel 1 kipindi ni zinga kikiwaanishwa na Good Morning Kenya na ndani ya studio tuko na mchanganuzo masuala ya kisiasa bwana Barak Moloka tukipiga jaramba kabla ya uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2020 mbili mimi naitwa Rashid Mumkondo na siku zote anakuambia utamu ukikolea we endelea tu sisi tunazidi <laughs> kuendelea ndani ya zinga msikilizaji mazungumzo yamekuwa ya, ya kufana na tunajifunza mengi zaidi hapa ndani ya studio msikilizaji na leo hii tunaendelea na hashtag #zinga na tunaendelea na hashtag #good morning kenya kwani iko nini nakumbuka kwamba msikilizaji kama ndio unafungulia radio yako sasa hivi uko ndani ya KBC Radio Taifa na vile vile uko ndani ya KBC Channel 1 kwa hiyo tutakuzidi kuzungumza na daktari Barak Muluka kuhusu masuala mengi tu ambayo yamejiri. Labda tunakirudi kwako bwana Muluka. Tume ya uhusiano na mshikamano wa kitaifa imetekeleza wajibu wake kikamilifu katika kuendeleza amani humu nchini. Tume hiyo imefeli. Mm. <laughs> hey, yani direct. Hey, yani daktari hapo kwa hapo unagonga. imefeli. Kivipi? Tangu enzi za mzalendo kibonjia akatoka kaja Francis Xavier ole kiparo ole kaparo alafu tumemuona Samuel Kobia imekuwa inajihusisha na siasa inaegemea upande huu inaegemea upande ule na hakuna hata mtu mmoja ambaye amewahi kuchukuliwa hatua za kisheria tangu hiyo tume ilipoundwa Um, nafikiri ilikuwa ni mwaka wa mbili na nane baada ya ghasia za uchaguzi 
tuliposema kwamba kitu kimoja ambacho wa vitu ambavyo vinatudhoofisha kama taifa mm-hmm. ni ukosefu wa uiana wa kitaifa kwamba tunapozungumzia uh, kuunda taifa ujenzi wa taifa mara nyingi tunasahau kwamba taifa ni watu ujenzi wa taifa sio kujenga haya mabarabara mm-hmm. au kujenga vyumba au ma, ma, majengo na madaraja na vitu vinginevyo vinayo kujenga taifa ni kuwaleta wa Kenya pamoja wajihisi kama wamekuwa ni kitu kimoja jamii moja na kazi kuu ya hiyo tume ni kuweza kudumisha elimu ambayo itamfanya mkenya katika pembe moja kumpenda na kumfurahia mkenya katika pembe nyingine mkenya wa kabila fulani kumpenda mwingine wa Kenya kujua kwamba hatima yao ni moja na kwamba wasifikirie vitu kwa mama ma, ma, tuseme tabaka za kimakundi makundi hivi kwamba sisi tunatoka hapa nyinyi mwatoka pale nyinyi ni wa dini hii sisi ni wa dini ile nyingine tujihisi kwamba sisi ni kitu kimoja mm. wamefeli kazi yao wamejifanya ni kama polisi <laughs> wa kuangalia kitu wanaita hate speech hate speech ni kitu ambacho wewe kama ungekuwa unafanya kazi yako vizuri hata hainge haingezuka mm kwa sababu tayari umeshaanza kuwaleta watu pamoja kuhamasisha pamoja lakini we hiyo hate speech pia unaifanya katika mirengo na mitindo ya kukupendelea mimi nasema kitu kibaya sana leo unaniacha tu ninaenda nacho uh-huh. Moses Kuri anasema wakati mmoja tuchukue panga tukatekate hawa akina Raila anawachwa tu kwa sababu wakati huo alikuwa upande ambao hiyo tume ilikuwa inaona eh ndio upande wao wakati ametoka sasa amevuka ameenda upande huu yeye na William Ruto wametoka huko baada anasema maneno yanayoingia katika mirengo hiyo hiyo ah anaambiwa sasa wewe utashikwa sasa utaenda kujibu utaenda kujibu maswali imefeli imefeli kabisa na hata haistahili ingekuwa inaendelea kutumia hela za umma uh-huh. itabidi ifikiriwe upya daktari barak muluka je hizi kula za maoni ambazo zinatolewa zikifuatana tu kwa wingi tu zina athari zozote uh, kura za maoni na utakumbuka kwamba rashid alisema kwamba uh-huh. nimewahi kuwa karibu na wanasiasa wakati mmoja kura za maoni ni kitu ambacho hutumika kama chombo cha kuweza kudadisia na kuona kwamba kule tunakoenda kutakuwa vipi na kama kura ingepigwa hii leo matokeo yake yangekuwa vipi lakini hapa kwetu Kenya ni kitu ambacho tumekitusi tunakitumia vibaya uh, sitamtaja ni mwanasiasa yupi lakini nimeweza kuwa karibu na wanasiasa kuanzia mwaka wa 2007 hadi mwaka 2019 nimeweza kuwa karibu hata nimeweza kuwa katibu mkuu katika chama cha kisiasa wawa hawa wanaotoa matokeo ya hizo kura nimewahi kuwa katika kikao ambacho wameulizia wao na wakaja wakasema kwamba kama kura ingepigwa leo uh-huh. ingejitokeza hivi uh-huh. na nyinyi mko hapa hivi lakini kuna vile ambavyo tunaweza kupanga alafu muanze kuimarika uh-huh. hatua kwa hatua baada ya muda wa miezi fulani mtakuwa hapa na sio eti wanawaambia vile mtakavyoenda kufanya ili muboreke katika maono machoni pa wapiga kura lakini jinsi wao wenyewe watakavyopandisha hizo takwimu kwa hiyo ni, ni, ni kwa upandishaji tu wa takwimu kila mmoja analipa sehemu yake ehe okay. unajilipia mm-hmm. alafu unapandishwa unapandishwa mm-hmm. na kama mnajilipia nyinyi nyote mm-hmm. unajua kuna watu wanaenda kwa mganga mmoja 
eh umahi kuona familia wanazozana wanaenda kwa mganga na wanaenda kwa mganga mmoja mm. unapofika huko anakuambia e, ya, kuna mtu hapo kwenu yuko hivi na hivi yuko hivi na unamuona tu ni yule dada yako mm. na yeye akienda huko anauliza kuna huyu ni nani huyu namuona huyu mtu mrefu huyu ambaye kidogo e, anachongo huyu ni nani huyu mm-hmm. na kumbe nyinyi mnaenda kwa mganga mmoja sasa <laughs> hawa wana siasa wanaenda kwa mganga mmoja Mm-hmm. Uh, mara leo anapandisha huyu kidogo anamshusha kidogo anapandisha yeye ana, ana collect zake mm-hmm. anaenda zake na msikilizaji basi tunataka kukupatia na wewe fursa jamani daktari Barak Muluka yuko ndani ya studio hebu muulize swali eh, lolote lile lakini tuwe ambao tunadumisha amani tuwe kwa, na ustahamilivu na tutulie kupitia sufuri saba sufuri sufuri moja saba sita sita tisa tisa vile vile tupatane kwenye mitandao ya kijamii tutakuwa tunasoma arafa zenu kupitia atmo juma chozi atmo mkondo at radio taifa hashtag zinga hashtag kbc channel one hashtag good morning kenya na kwa wale ambao natufuatilia kwenye uh, facebook ni kbc radio taifa tuko live pale na vile vile maswali yako yenu tunayapokea kuna mmoja hapa chozi anakuuliza wewe mm. anaitwa Beno Cheng mm. anasema utamu wa nini anaongelea hivyo huyo mwachozi yani wewe umesikia utamu tu daktari uko hapa umesikia utamu tu <laughs> haya radio taifa hello <laughs> Hello <laughs> BBC. Yes sir. Asante Yes sir. Yeye ni mtu huyu. Karibu sana. Ramia Muluka mtu wa nyumbani huyu. Asante sana John habari yako? Ushia na Muluka. Ushia mno Bolorie. Ndio mtu ambaye sio mimi ni mahuri ya mitaani ya juu yipo. Ah sasa sasa twende basi turudi kwa lugha ya taifa. <laughs> 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 Yes sir. Asante. Hello Zinga Radio Taifa. Safi. Nimesalimika sana kakangu. Karibu. Asante. Leo mimi mheshimiwa. Karibu kama 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 tangu tangu nianza kuleta watu kwenye studio ambao wanaelimisha na kufanya watu akili zao zirudi chini na waache kujamjamu mmm unasta leo na na hizo siku mbili tatu zimefika hapo ndo nimekuletea watu hata kama mtu alikuwa ana kitu kitu fulani anaelimishwa anaelewa asante unaona kwa sababu yeye isingine mko na kuletea watu kutengemea mlango mlembo mmoja na kuna watu kisema ukweli wanapoanza sisi sisi ni wajinga na hiyo kitu watu wengi walinzika sana kwa hiyo mimi nataka kusema sasa hivi Kenya Kenya tunachotakiwa ni amani amani ndio tunaiingia sio kama ila ama sisi nani hata kuletea ugali kwako ugali ni wewe mwenyewe unajitafutia mimi na rashidi na chozi tunajitafutia ugali kwa hiyo mambo mengine au mambo mengine Asante. 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 
kutoka na manga asante mvi msani we kweli kweli haa ready taifa simi ya mwisho hello hey, rashid <laughs> yes sir kitu cha kwanza na wambia kongole asante kwa nini mumekuwa muki mtuletea mtu mtu moja hapo za honda zileta niruhusu ni mtaja na kwa kamali aa angalia uliza tu swali uliza uliza tu swali unataka mtuletea mtu kama uliza swali uliza uliza swali uliza swali daktari leo ee wa kenya waate ku waate waate kupambania hawa watu maana hawa watu kuna mtu atamupa mtu chakula wajue kenya ni yetu na sisi zote ni watoto wa mungu mmoja asante swali lako ni lipi hello kbc channel 1 hello kbc aha sawa sawa tababara studio mzuri sawa sawa tabiza na kuwa bigi episode kala ni pain karibu sana sawa sawa naona wanasiasa wako ba moja so shida hiko sisi kwa wanaingi sasa mhm inabidi tuende tu ba moja wawo watamalisa kazi yao na wanaende kusalimiana Hey. Haya, bwana Muluka kuna simu nyingi sana zimeingia. Ndivyo. Ndivyo. Sijui unaweza ku react vipi kwa hizi simu lakini yeah. kimoja tu anafurahia kwamba umewaelimisha. Sifa, ni sifa. Mm. Yaani daktari mm. leo unasifiwa ndani ya KBC Radio Taifa na Channel 1. Bas na mimi nakuwa mnyenyekevu sana e, kwa kuweza kupata hizo e, kongole. Uh, sio kama Rashid hapa mara nyingi hunivisha kilemba cha ukoka <laughs> jinsi nilivyomweleza wakati ule mm-hmm. eh, lakini wa Kenya wamepevuka umeona hata licha ya ukweli kwamba kuna cheche kali za maneno ambazo zinarushwa na wanasiasa pasi na hata mmoja ambaye harushi hizo cheche hasa kutoka katika mirengo mikumi wili wanarusha cheche za maneno makali makali mm-hmm. lakini wa Kenya wamekuwa watulivu nafikiri amani ambayo naiona ikidumishwa katika huu uchaguzi haitatokana na kwamba magoha amefunga shule au kwamba e, Rais, rais, rais uhuru amewaambia watu wadumishe amani mm-hmm. au kwamba naibu wa rais William Ruto amesema kwamba atakubali matokeo au Raila Odinga amewaambia watu wake wakati huu eh, tuchukue mtindo tofauti mm-hmm. ni vitu vitakavyotokana na, na ukweli kwamba mkenya amechoka Mkenya amechoka na fujo zisijo, zisizo na maana kwamba unatufanyisha fujo watu wanauawa watoto wanapigwa wanakufa risasi zinafanya mambo na kisha baada ya hapo mnaendelea mm-hmm. ha mm-hmm. yani wananchi wamekuwa ni vyombo vya kutumiwa wamekuwa ni rashasha rashasha za kutumia katika kujitafutia makuu na nafikiri wananchi wakati huu watavikata mm. watavikata naona wananchi ninapoendelea na kuwasikiliza wakiwa ni watu ambao wanauliza ni nini hasa mna tupangia mm. hata wale ambao nimewalaumu kwa kiasi sababu kuna wale lazima ni walaumu mm. wanakimbia kimbia huku na kwenda kuchukua hela kidogo huku na kwenda kuchukua hela kule nja, nja. tuseme tu ni njaa mm ni njaa inawasumbua <laughs> na wanaelewa kwamba watapiga kura kwa njia fulani. Mm-hmm. Kwa hivyo wewe sasa ndio utakuwa mjinga wewe mwanasiasa unaenda huko ukifikiri huko katika soko la mnada mm-hmm. la kusema mwanaume ni wallet. Mm-hmm. Eh, huko kwetu mimi natoka katika sehemu ya Huisero. Unasikia wanasema mwanaume ni wallet. Mm-hmm. Sasa unashangaa. Watu wamekuwa ni kuku wa <laughs> wakununuliwa ndio unasema mwanaume ni wallet na sisi tusio na wallet tusizungumze kakamega huko wanasema mwanaume ni wallet huo ni usemi wa kushangaza tu lakini nafikiri kwamba hiyo wallet yako usipochunga eh ke, wa Kenya wataila hiyo wallet labda daktari eh, Barak Muluka ngome yangu ngome yangu ngome yangu kuna ngome ya mtu Hakuna ngome ya mtu sisi sote ni wa Kenya kutoka Vanga 
kufika na manga sisi wote ni wa Kenya kutoka na manga kwenda kufika Liboi sisi sote ni wa Kenya kutoka Vanga kufika Busia sisi wote ni wa Kenya kufika mahali panaitwa Nadapal sisi wote ni wa Kenya na kila mtu ana uhuru wa kuweza kwenda mahali popote kuweza kutafuta kuchaguliwa katika mahali popote pasipo kuzuiliwa na dhana za dini dhana za kijinsia dhana za kikabila na dhana nyinginezo za kitabaka mtu anapokuja na kusema hii ni ngome na sisi kama wana habari kwa sababu mimi ni mwana habari uh-huh. niliajiriwa hapa nikafanya hii kazi nzuri mnaifanya uh-huh. eh? hapa hivi sisi wana habari uh-huh. tumechangia pakubwa katika kudumisha kwa hili dhana potovu kwamba kuna ngome za watu uh-huh. tunasema eh, Odinga gets into Ruto's mm. backyard, backyard mm. a stronghold Ruto invades mm. na tunatumia hata msamiati wa kutatanisha mm-hmm. msamiati wa kivita vita hivi invades bwana muluka bwana muluka kabla uswange mbele nilikuwa na jaswali hilo hilo wewe kama mwanahabari wa miaka mingi sekta hii yetu ya wanahabari inafanya nini ili kuleta habari za uhakika wakati wa uchaguzi umelianza sami nimeliendeleza ndio lishikane vizuri kuna mahali ambapo tumekosea na nimeingia katika msamiati na matumizi ya lugha kwa mfano mtu anaposema kwamba msipigie wezi kura hatuwezi kuingia kwa newsroom pale mm. na kusema kwamba amesema wasiwapigie wezi kura kwa sababu sisi hatuna ushahidi kwamba hao watu ni wezi tungesema amesema tusipigie watu ambao amewataja kuwa wezi kura kwa sababu ye ndiye ametaja eh? watu ambao amewataja wanataka kulete ghasia huwezi kusema kwamba amewasuta watu wanaotaka kulete ghasia mm-hmm. unaposema amewasuta watu wanaotaka kulete ghasia tayari wewe umeshiriki katika hiyo dhana kwamba kuna watu wanaotaka kusababisha ghasia. Wanasema Na... wanahabari hatujui kuchuja maneno. Hatuchuji. Mm. Na ninashangaa kama bado kuna wahariri mm. katika vyumba vya habari. Mm. Na kama hawa wahariri wanajua kwamba maneno msamiati una uzito, uzito fulani. Na ni uzito ambao unaweza kuhasam, kuhamasisha au unaweza kutawanya. Mm. Na tungeweza kuwa tukipeana kipaumbele kwa ukweli kwamba hii nchi ni yetu kuna serikali tekelezi kuna mahakama na kuna wabunge na sisi jinsi ambavyo alitutaja Oliver Cromwell miaka ile ya zamani ni the fourth estate na hii fourth estate ifanye kazi yake sio kwa njia ya kuonyesha kwamba e, ni kama ndondi tumeenda kwenye kwenye kwe, 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 kwe ringside tunatazama pale watu wakimwagiana makonde uh-huh. na tunaona huyu anamwaga zaidi na sisi kazi yetu ni kuripoti tu hivi vitu vinatuhusu uh-huh. vinahusu watoto wetu angalia sasa wametolewa shuleni wamerudishwa nyumbani vinatuhusu uh-huh. sio boli baina ya Manchester United na Arsenal uh-huh. ambavyo vinafanyika kule mbali utakuja useme oh tumewashinda oh mmetushinda Hivi ni vitu vinavyo kuhusu moja kwa moja hata ukiwa mwanahabari hata ukiwa raia wa kawaida ukiwa polisi kila mtu angefanya kazi yake kwa mujibu wa sheria na maagizo ya kitaaluma tungekuwa na nchi nzuri sana sasa mi nataka tumalizie maana naona kwamba muda pia unatupa kisogo lakini nitambatanisha maswali mawili. Je, unamzungumziaje Uhuru Kenyatta kama kiongozi wa nchi hii? Alafu mwisho tuzungumzie amani. Eh, uhuru Kenyatta amekuwa na nafasi ya kuongoza miaka kumi tumempunguzia kidogo haijafika kumi kamili 
lakini kufuatana na katiba ile iliyowekwa inayosema kwamba uchaguzi utakuwa tarehe fulani na utaendelea hivi na vile uh, kwa mutasari kuna vitu vya kimiundo misingi ambavyo amevifanya vitu vizuri baba yangu yuko bado hai kule Emanyuja anakaribia kuwa miaka tisini na aliweza kuishi hapa Nairobi kwa miaka mingi nafikiri nitamlete huku Nairobi hivi karibuni aweze kutembea hapa na ataona kwamba kuna maendeleo zaidi hata mji wenyewe wa Nairobi atapotea atashangaa hivi ni vitu gani ambavyo wamevifanya ni vitu vizuri tu um, kuna mambo ya stima kuna mambo ya kawi kwa jumla kuna mambo ya ugatuzi ambayo yametendeka katika awamu yake mm-hmm. na ni vitu vizuri vimefanyika hata kule kwetu Emanyudi tunaona mabarabara ya lami kwa mara ya kwanza na tunaona maji watu wanayapata kutoka karibu na makwao hayo ni maendeleo ambayo yametokana na serikali ya rais uhuru Kenyatta ambavyo huvizungumzia SGR ingawa yeye na Raila Odinga walikuja kule kwetu wakatuambia watarejesha reli kutoka Kisumu mpaka Butere hatujaiona tunaona tu nyasi na ngombe mm-hmm. wakiwa hapo tukimalizana na hayo baba kwa sekunde tatu tu bwana sekunde mbili mm-hmm. ah, kuna vile rais uhuru Kenyatta amelete mgawanyiko katika taifa na ningemuomba sana aweze kufikiria na kutafakari katika siku saba hizo ambazo amebaki nazo kama rais aweze kujaribu kulete taifa pamoja aondoke katika haya ma, malumbano yake na naibu wake na naibu wake pia ningemuomba atoke katika haya malumbano yake na na rais amlenge Odinga na yeye na Odinga wajaribu kutumia lugha nzuri kwa sababu nchi hii ni yetu na tutakuwa na nchi hata baada ya uchaguzi. Bila shaka mtazamaji wa Channel One kufikia hapo tunabudi kulikunja jambo la kipindi chetu iko leo. Shukurani za dhati ni kwake Barak Muluka ambaye ameacha shughuli zake nyingi na kuja katika studio zetu za Radio Taifa kuweza kuzungumza na wasikilizaji ambao wamefurahia jinsi alivyoelimisha. Asante vile vile pia wenzetu kutoka upande wa pili wa Runinga kwa kuweza kufanikisha kipindi hiki bila kumsahau Bilusi wa Home, Martin King Asenyongesa, Geoffrey Onditi na Bernard Marang Asante Ben Ngui na kikosi chako. Mimi naitwa Rashid Mumkondo kwa niaba ya Chozi la Almasi. Asanteni. described as the enigma in Kenyan politics for 50 years Kenyans have wandered in the wilderness his critics are as eloquent as his supporters are in their praise when it was in the interest of the country that it was important for him to work with Kanu for the benefit of the country he did that As a seasoned politician, his tab at the presidency has been a case of so near yet so far. They now have an opportunity through these elections. But who is this man? Raila Odinga, through the eyes of the Kenyan youth. The 2022 Commonwealth Games will be hosted in Birmingham, United Kingdom from the 28th of July through the 8th of August 2022. Team Kenya is set to make its 17th appearance at the Games. Kenya will contest for medals in several disciplines among them athletics, boxing, hockey, rugby, weightlifting, wheelchair basketball and para sports among others. Watch the games live on KBC Channel 1. KBC Channel 1 your true sports partner. No, 
Wait, Dad, are you going to leave me alone? You said that you were going to stay here. Don't do this to me, Dorian, please. this is an emergency. It's about my son. What happened to me is also an emergency. And how did you find out about it? I never stopped looking for you, Monica. Have you been watching the lives of everyone here all this time? Yes. I feel degraded because of it. What I feel right now is anger. I'm angry and I feel stupid for not realizing early enough that Lionel had been going to bed with that woman for more than four years, Mom. This isn't about what you want. It's about who you love. Mitika sileo makala kutoka BBC ya liomo ni kinyanganyiro kipya cha kutoa umiliki wa Afrika au ni mikakati kuwa uh, kifua mbele mataifa yenye nguvu zaidi kutoka magharibi yaweka hema ya ushawishi barani